tayo sa United Arab uh, Movement Philippines. Tapos sa uh, sa YouTube po yan, no? Sir Carl. No? Well, YouTube tayo and then sa mga RTBM. Tapos RTBM po, Radio TV Mindanao. Radio TV Malacanang. Radio TV Malacanang Network. Hindi sa PTV4. Akin hati. Okay, bye. Ano ang po yung Zoom mo? Ano yung ating Zoom? Yan na nga o. Ano yung nasa na ako? Ano naman ako? Pwede na yan pag ako. 8115. Pag ay naro na nawala na. Sige na po ulit. Hi to 8115267 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Na po sa Zoom. <coughs> Mag-aano na lang daw si Sir Ray. Edwin, nakikita niyo yung screen? Yes, engineer, nakikita po. Thank you, thank you. 8-1-1-5. Opo. Hindi po, 8-1-1-5. So, Edwin, baka-formal yung engineer mo. <laughs> yes, sir. Ewan ko sa kanya, bakit engineer ako? <laughs> Lagyan mo na lang yan, kapatid. Engineer ka kasi partner. Boss ko si Engineer Ibing. Teka po. Nakamute na po ito sa amin. Nakamute na po ako. Ito lang po ang naririnig natin. Po, um, 9 a.m. po tayo mag-muting lahat. 9 a.m. Open po. I hope. Sir, RTPM po. Kailangan mauna po ako mag-live bago kayo mag-start. Kaya mag-live na po ako ng 8.58 a.m. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you sa Radio TV Malacanang Network. Okay po. D-A-L-U. Good morning to everybody. Pilipinas ang mag-celebra sa birthday mo, bro. Edwin. Happy birthday, Edwin. Intayin mo yung action galing sa kay kapisig ko of ni Loret. Terga, Edwin. Kami lah. Tidak. Tidak. Tak sekarang kami tu si kayu. Hindi, 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 hindi. Uh, please direct your uh, eyes to the screen to view the house rules for today.
please take note that during the open forum, uh, we should limit ourselves uh, probably in two to three minutes discussion or clarification with respect to the following uh, topics that uh, will be discussed later so that we will give more time to others for others to uh, express their views as well. May we request everyone uh, for a minute of silence to pray for the soul of our colleague, Mom Elsie Remonte, who just passed away uh, several weeks back. Moment of silence, please. And Kong Ping Ai, Congressman Ping Ai, uh, who's also a great leader, he will be buried today. God bless their soul. Thank you. Uh, may we now proceed with the opening prayer. I'm 
Mga kababayan, ang pampansang awit ng Pilipinas. Cooperative Pledge is the Director of Farm Tourism, the Department of Tourism. Uh, he is, she is one of the champions of the agriculture sector, a Board of Regent member of one of the state universities in Ilocos Sur, and currently uh, she is the Chief Executive Officer of Nueva Segovia Consortium of Cooperatives and a member of the Philippine Cooperative Center Board. Please welcome Mom Divine Kemi. Thank you, Sir Edwin. Let's all recite the Cooperative Pledge together and please raise your right hand. As a Filipino, I am and I believe in the Cooperative. Alone, I am weak. But with but others, I am strong. With others, I am strong. With others, so I commit myself to work. So I commit myself to work to cooperate. For all to be prosperous. All to be prosperous. Harmony. Industry. Industry. I will value. I will value. I will value. Cooperative affairs, I will attend. Cooperative affairs, I will attend. Responsibilities, simulation. I will assume. A cooperative philosophy, I will leave. Cooperative philosophy, I will leave. One vision, one vision, one feeling, one feeling, one belief. One, one belief. One belief. In cooperativism. In cooperativism, my In cooperativism, life. In cooperativism, my life. So help me God. To help me God. To help me God. Me God. Thank you, Mom Divine. No, so we will now start the uh, uh, the program. Uh, my co-host is. It's Mom Zenny of the PCF. Hi, everyone. And... Yes, please, Mom Zenny. Hi, everyone. 
<laughs> I would like to thank Secretary Andanar no, for the live coverage uh, of this event, uh, Ma'am Seni. Happy cooperative month to all of us. Yeah, to all of us. Yes, ma'am. We would like to thank everyone for your full support in uh, the lobbying of uh, the bill uh, that led to the passage in both houses, declaring the month of October as the National Cooperative Month. We are just awaiting for the signature of President Rodrigo Roa Duterte for it to become a law. Thank you, Committee on Cooperatives, through its chairperson, Congressman Sabiniano Ben Canama of Co-op Not Co Party List, and the Senate Committee on Cooperatives through Senator Juan Miguel Mig Subiri. Today, despite the pandemic situation, we rejoice that the Philippines now has a cooperative month to celebrate our successes. And globally, cooperatives celebrate the International Cooperative Day every 4th of July. Yes, Mantani. And uh, we would like to acknowledge our cooperative leaders from five primaries, federations, and unions who are joining us to participate in today's very important forum, uh, where our speakers is from the International Cooperative Alliance. Uh, I saw uh, uh, Kong Ben is already in the room, and also Yusek Orton Rabanera, Ma'am Zeni. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Um, to give us a very special message, she, uh, he is, sorry, he is uh, the current chairperson of the Committee on Cooperatives Development and party list representatives of Co-op Natco. Uh, he was a former city councilor in Tangub City, Misamis Occidental, former CEO of a billionaire co-op, Lorenzo Tan, multipurpose cooperative in Tangub City, Misamis Occidental, ex-seminarian, uh, married with uh, three kids to city councilor Wilma Kanama, our champion in Congress. Let us all welcome Congressman Sabiniano Ben Kanama for a special message. Oh. Probably, Ma'am uh, uh, Zeni, no? Uh, baka may glitch dun sa kanyang signal. May, may we request uh, Sir Carl to advise him na lang later. Yeah. Is, is he here? Kong Ben? All right. Uh, we'll, we'll call him again, uh, Ma'am Zeni. Yes, let's call later. Emergency meeting si Kong. So let's proceed with the program, Ma'am Zeni. Uh, our speaker, he is uh, a product of Xavier University, Ateneo de Cagayan, with Bachelor of Science in Agriculture, major in Agricultural Economics and postgraduate of Bachelors of Law from the same university. Siya po ay former uh, regional director ng CDA in Region 10. He manifested a clear grasp of the cooperative's role not only in poverty alleviation, but more positively of the cooperative's role in developing advanced agriculture as a key to inclusive growth. He is also the chairman of the Philippine Federation of Rural Broadcasters in Region 10. The chairman is a columnist in the local paper in Region 10, the Sun Star, twice a week, focusing on cooperatives, environment, and people empowerment, believing that people united can never be defeated. Colleagues, fellow cooperators, please welcome the chairperson of the Cooperative Development Authority under Secretary Rabanera. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Edwin Bastilios, for that very kind introduction. Uh, magandang umaga po sa lahat to the President of the International Cooperative Alliance, Dr. Ariel Guarco, 
the ICA Regional Director for Asia and the Pacific, M Mr. Balo Ayer, to our champion in Congress, Honorable Kong Sabiniano Ben Canama, to the PCC President, Mr. Gary Leonardo, to my good friend, PCC Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Edwin Bostilios, to all city officials and personnel, and most importantly, the cooperative leaders and members virtually present here with us today, who I would call them the cream of the crop of the co-op movement. Ladies and gentlemen, magandang umaga po sa lahat. Good morning. We are very fortunate that despite of the effect brought about by this pandemic, not just to the country, but to the whole world, we are still here gathered in this momentous occasion. And I guess this is the first of its kind for us in the cooperative movement to celebrate our series of events lined up in celebration of the National Cooperative Month virtually. Indeed, the theme of this year's celebration, cooperatives amidst the pandemic, is stand for resiliency, is strive for sustainability. It's really relevant as cooperatives remain to be resilient and continue to work towards sustainability amidst the current ch challenges that we face. In facing all these uncertainties and challenges, cooperatives in the country rose to the occasion and managed to find ways to ensure that no one, not even the non-members, shall be left behind. As I continuously say in most of the events that I attended, from the bottom of my heart, a million thanks and my firm salute to all the cooperatives in the country who are continuously extending assistance to those in need, be it members of their cooperatives or non-members. Thank you for so much. Talking about sustainability, there must now be a paradigm shift towards an economic system that is based on collective cooperation where the people harness their collective potentials, where the marginalized sectors are drawn into the mainstream of development processes, where the people have access and control over their resources, where wealth and power are democratized and where people and the environment are the priorities rather than mere business and profit. Everywhere, growth in equities, crisis in democracy, decrease in social justice, threats of climate change and violent extremism. These are extraordinary phenomena which painfully are becoming ordinary. There is now looming a countervailing force that harnesses the collective power of the people. That alternative development paradigm is called cooperativism. Post day and age are as follows. Number one, members own. Number two, value-based and sustainable. Number three, its values are industry, honesty, hard work, cooperation, equity, democratic control, and where people have societal concern. Food security and ecological integrity are its parameters of engagement. Rather than extraction and exploitation of nature. I remember, I remember what the great Mahatma Gandhi said about eight decades ago. Ang sabi po niya, that if man has to be saved from development. Sorry, sir. Um, may we request the one who's speaking to mute uh, his microphone, please? Uh, thank you for that, uh, Edwin. Yung po siya sabi noon ni Mahatma Gandhi, sabi po niya, if man has to be saved from them, development must be in harmony with nature and not at the expense of nature. At ang sabi po niya, there is enough for everyone's need, but not for everyone's greed. Indeed, we cannot allow the life support systems to collapse in pursuit of a never-ending... <laughs> Hello. 
unmute ko yan. If I may continue. Uh, Sorry again, Mr. Chair. Mama. Yeah, Edwin, no, please. Uh, it has been said we cannot allow the life support system to collapse yeah. for so long, a never ending yeah. economic brought about by the present development paradigm that sacrifices the people and mother earth to the altar of greed and profit. As you all know, in a study by Oxfam, there is so, according to the study, and sorry, Tanina, there is so much veneration to the profit motive that has captured the mindset of all governments, all institutions, all universities, and even religious groups. Humanity, yeah. according to the study, has yeah. been reduced yeah. to self-gratification yeah. machines, so enamored uh, in externalities and trivialities, buried deeply in so much consumerism and materialism, while there is increasing denigration of spirituality. So cooperativism is an unviolent response to that war that threatens to destroy us all, even the victors. Likewise, empowerment is now the call of the times because when people are empowered, it will give way to social structuring. The looming new structure is cooperativism, which is now considered the people's preferred development model according to the United Nations, as the cooperatives are now seen globally as the acknowledged leaders in the economic, social, and ecological sustainability. Cooperatives are recognized. Sir? Na na. Mr. Chair, naka-mute po kayo, Mr. Chair. For a while, please. Um, may we request uh, Hello po. Uh, nakakaya naman po sa mga speakers natin, please uh, give due respect. Pwede po uh, i-unmute po. Kasi kahit po minumute po namin, uh, May gumagalaw po. So, pwede po bang let's respect yung speaker? Uh, please mute your microphone. Okay, thank you. So, so thank you, uh, Edwino. So, if I, if I may continue. Hindi, konti naman lang ito eh. No? If I may. Uh, according to a previous report, the blueprint strategy involves concentrating on these five critical interlinked themes and establishing implementation strategies in relation to each of them. And as seen in their performance, co-ops continue to strive to the, the following. It. And if I may just uh, briefly say that. Number one, elevate participation within membership and governance to a new level. Number two, position cooperatives as builders of sustainability. Number three, build the cooperative message and secure the cooperative identity. And number four, ensure supportive legal frameworks for cooperative growth. And number five, secure, reliable, cooperative capital while guaranteeing member control. Now more than ever, the entire cooperative movement must anchor on these strategies we face bigger challenges that lie ahead of us. However, co-ops also need to constantly assess their programs and impact that these strategies bring along to a wide range of factors to include, number one, social, economic, and environmental. These strategies coupled with the innate values and principles of cooperatives and its DNA embedded in co-ops would pave the way towards a brighter future for the cooperative globally and to show that the co-ops have their way of doing social and economic activities which is both better and brings a more effective balance to the global economy than the dominance of a one single model. So let me end uh, my message by this quote from the great Indian poet and philosopher Rabindranath Tagore when he said, let us unite, not in spite of our differences, but through them. For differences can never be wiped away, and all life would be so much the poorer without them. Let all human races keep their own personalities and yet come together, not in a uniformity that is dead, but in a unity that is living. Annie Pardier said that Nobel laureate said eight decades ago. And I quote, where the mind is without fear, 
and the head is still die. Where knowledge is free, where the world is not broken down by narrow domestic walls, in that heaven of freedom, my father, let my people away. So fellow cooperators, let us continue to unite as one cooperative movement in the country and with our brothers in the movement and sisters in the movement in other parts of the world. Together, we can all make a huge difference and impact in the lives of our fellow men. So, salamat po. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. And welcome to the virtual forum with the International Cooperative Alliance. Mabuhay ang samang kooperatiba. Thank you so much, po. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Orlan Rabanera, Yusuf Rabanera. Sir, uh, sorry for the glitches. May we request a copy of your speech, sir, so we can post it sa United Cooperative Movement Philippines? Yeah, it will be a great to honor, uh, Edwin. I'll send it to yes, you, sir. sir. Amen. Okay. Thank you very much for that inspiring message, sir. Uh, uh, Edwin, no? I have another meeting. Is it okay if I leave now? Yes, sir. And dito naman okay. po si Ray, sir. Uh, thank so, you so much. Thank you so much. Resiliency, sustainability. Resilient, sustainable. Yan po yung strong character ng cooperative in this pandemic, as uh, mentioned by uh, Chair Rabanera. And uh, alam po natin na uh, the economic system needs an alternative, as uh, he mentioned. So, Chair, thank you very much po. I uh, would like to request for your speaker. Thank you very much. Again, thank you. everyone, uh, please uh, cooperate. We posted the ground rules kanina. Uh, we're trying, Sir Darrell of... Uh, the Co-op Not co party list will uh, mute everyone. Uh, so, pakiusap na lang po na let's cooperate uh, and uh, uh, be respectful para dun po sa mga speakers po natin. Okay po? All right. So, Ma'am Seni. Yeah, thank you, Edwin. So, we, on to the next speaker. And to welcome us is a respected leader in the co cooperative sector. He is an entrepreneur a real estate lessor in Sukat Paranaque, and an automotive, automotive battery distributor. He is a retired senior executive of Ramcar Group of Companies. His areas of expertise include general management, strategic planning, marketing, and SAP R3, which is the world's largest enterprise software. He is presently a member of the board of directors of San Dionisio Credit Cooperative which is the oldest community-based cooperative in the country. He has been a member of SDCC for more than 30 years and has served the cooperative in various capacities. Other positions held include, dami nito. We have um, Director of Credit Information Corporation, Treasurer and former Vice Chairperson of Metro South Cooperative Bank, Chairperson of the Foundation of MSCB, Chairperson of the Co-op Deposit Insurance System, or CODIS. President of the NCM Mutual Fund. Chairperson of the Paranaque Credit Surety Fund. Vice Chairperson of Co-op Health Management Federation. And Chairperson of Philippine Cooperative Central Fund Federation. It is my honor to present to you the Chairperson of Philippine Cooperative Center, a true cooperative leader, Dr. Garibaldi or Dr. Gary De Leonardo. Take it away, Dr. Gary. Uh, thank you, Zenny, and thank you, Edwin. Uh, good morning, everyone, and happy Cooperative Month to all of us, which carries with it the theme that was already mentioned by Chair Orlan. <clears throat> Cooperatives amidst the pandemic stand for resiliency, strive for sustainability. Good morning, Kongben, Asia Pacific Regional Director Balu Ayer, CDA Chair Orlan Rabanera, and ED Ray Elevaso. <clears throat> For and in behalf of the Philippine Cooperative Center, together with the 10 other ICA member cooperatives from the Philippines, I wish to welcome you all to this morning's forum on Cooperative Day with ICA. We would also like to thank ICA President Ariel Guarco for obliging us with a video message.
uh, that we li that we will listen to later. And of course, Asia Pacific Regional Director Balu Ayer for obliging us also with this presentation on advancing people-centered enterprises, the prime example of which would be us, cooperatives. As indicated in our invite, this forum is meant to bring to fore how Philippine cooperatives have been supporting and can further support the overlapping themes of the ICA blueprint for the next decade. This is mainly in the context of the pandemic that we are all presently experiencing. As we will find out later, there are four themes that cut across ICA's five pillars. And what are these pillars? Again, as mentioned earlier by Chair Orlan, we have participation, sustainability, identity, legal framework, and capital. All of which make up ICA's overarching agenda for this past decade and which ICA has decided to carry over to the next decade. These four themes and five pillars in turn support ICA's vision for 2020 that has also been carried forward to 2030. Without necessarily preempting the speakers, this 2030 vision consists of looking at ICA first as the acknowledged leader in economic, social, and environmental sustainability. Second, as the model preferred by the people. And third, as the fastest growing form of enterprise. All this will be expounded by the two key people from ICA that I mentioned earlier and who will be duly introduced later. So let's listen intently to what they and the reactors will share, and then let's try to see how we can contextualize our learnings to the present crisis. Muli, isang magandang umaga at maligayang buwan ng mga kooperatiba sa ating lahat. Thank you, Chair Gary, for that very inspiring uh, message. And we now see that uh, we're actually, we do support, no? The Philippine Cooperative support the ICA strategy blueprint amidst the pandemic. And that there is a 2030 vision of the ICA to become the leader, the model, and the fastest growing business enterprise. Again, to make a difference in the lives of so many. Uh, with that, Edwin, I turn back to you. Yes, ma'am, uh, Zeni, you know, that it is up to involve our leaders at the global level in this cooperative month celebration. Uh, sabi nga, uh, naririnig ko palagi ito kay Father Anton. Think globally, act locally. That will be our guide in today's forum, uh, everyone. So please, uh, fellow cooperators, Free your minds of worries, listen, and actively participate in the topics that will be shared today based on the perspective of the International Cooperative Alliance and our fellow cooperators that will share their reactions. So uh, before we call Mam Zeni, uh, or before we show the video, uh, may we may we request Congressman Ben Kanamana, who is on, who's in the room. Uh, earlier we called his attention the current emergency meeting, but now he's back. So may we recognize Congressman Ben Kanama, Kong Ben. Ah, uh, hello, sir. Edwin. Hi. Uh, okay. Happy birthday. <laughs> Wait, happy birthday. Tama yung pagkapili mo sa date ba? Oh, parang, thank you, Robin, thank you. Parang coincidence lang. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, lahat na nagatin po ngayon, may utang po kay Edwin para sa birthday gift. Uh, cooperative, cooperatives are a reminder to the international community that it is possible to pursue both economic viability and social resp responsibility. Today, is a momentous event for the Philippine cooperatives as we celebrate the Cooperative Month with our partners in the International 
community, the ICA. So my due respect, good morning po, and my salute and sincere appreciation to our distinguished guests, Sir Ariel Guarco, ICA President, and Balo Ayer, ICA Asia Pacific Regional Director, for gracing this event. Kanina po, na pakinggan ko po si CDA Chairperson, uh, Rabanira, thank you po for uh, joining this one. And of course, our idol po sa PCC, Sir Gary. Sir, uh, good morning. We are all proud for this event showcasing the strength of the, the sector. As the representative of the cooperatives in the Hall of Congress, I am very happy to join you in this event. I am just here, whatever I can do, I can support uh, from the national fora that we conducted, patungo na tayo sa international. It's good because we cannot live in a box here only in the Philippines, but we must, sabi pa ni Edwin, think globally, although we act uh, locally. It's really good to be connected. And I think it's now the time to also learn from the best practices from our international partners. In closing, let us uh, be united together. We will heal as one. Mabuhay po ang kooperatiba sa Pilipinas. Mabuhay po tayo sa cooperative movement. Padayon lang po in spite of the pandemic. Nandito lang din po ako at your service. Salamat and good morning. Maraming salamat po, Congressman Ben Kanama. Maraming uh, palakpak. Siya po ang ating champion sa Kongreso, ang kinatawan ng Co-op Not Co-Partilist, ang chairperson ng Committee on Cooperatives Development. Thank you very much, uh, Congressman Ben Kanama. Saludo po. So, Ma'am Zeni. Uh, to Thank you, Kong Ben. Thank you, Kong Ben. To give a message for the International Cooperative Alliance is the president since 2011 of Cooperar the Confederation of Cooperatives for Ar of Argentina. Cooperar works with 74 cooperative federations, 5,000 cooperatives, and 10 million members. He is also the president since 2008 of the Federation of Electric and Public Services Cooperatives of the province of Buenos Aires. He is the author of the book, The Argentine Cooperative Movement, A Hopeful Look into the Future. He is a member of the ICA's Global Board since 2013 and Deputy Vice President of Cooperatives of the Americas since 2014. He has been elected President of the International Cooperative Alliance during the Alliance's General Assembly in 2017. But because of time zone difference, Dr. Ariel Guarco, President of the International Cooperative Alliance, will not be able to join us live in the Zoom forum and instead he sent a video message for all of us. So we now present the video message of Dr. Um, Ariel Guarco. Estimados amigos del Philippine Cooperative Center, les agradezco que me hayan invitado a compartir con ustedes algunas ideas acerca de cómo poner en marcha el plan estratégico de la ASI en este contexto tan particular que estamos atravesando en todo el mundo. Este plan, que hemos bautizado como un camino centrado en las personas para una segunda década cooperativa, es el resultado de dos años de intenso trabajo en consulta con los miembros y con los distintos órganos que componen la Alianza Cooperativa Internacional. Como ustedes saben, fue aprobado en nuestra Asamblea General realizada en Kigali hace un año y creo que puede ser una excelente hoja de ruta para trabajar juntos a escala global en el marco de la Agenda 2030 propuesta por Naciones Unidas. En primer lugar, quiero remarcar que este plan recoge la visión que nos habíamos propuesto para 2020, es decir, 
Ser líderes reconocidos de la sostenibilidad económica, social y medioambiental. Ser el modelo preferido por la gente y ser el tipo de organización empresarial de más rápido crecimiento. Creo que esto cobra un significado muy particular en este escenario actual, cuando el mundo está sumergido en una crisis sanitaria, ambiental, económica y social sin precedentes. En medio de tanta incertidumbre y dolor provocados por la pandemia, nosotros queremos ofrecer un horizonte y podemos mostrar cómo ir hacia ese horizonte. Nuestros valores y principios, nuestra identidad cooperativa, nuestra acción en los territorios, son ventajas que nos permiten posicionarnos como empresas capaces de construir una salida de las crisis con crecimiento económico, con inclusión social, con miradas innovadoras de la mano de las mujeres y los jóvenes, con una mayor responsabilidad en la producción y el consumo y con un fuerte compromiso con la paz. Por eso, esta hoja de ruta se vuelve indispensable para que todos los miembros de la ASI, las organizaciones regionales y sectoriales, los comités temáticos y las redes y cada uno de los miembros pueda contribuir desde su país, desde su región, a lograr estos objetivos globales. Precisamente, decimos en este documento que el compromiso con los valores y principios cooperativos es de suma importancia en el mundo de hoy y advertimos que, si no abrazamos sinceramente nuestra identidad cooperativa, si no permitimos que esa identidad se extienda a través de las organizaciones que representamos, nos enfrentaremos a una crisis existencial. Sin dudas, a partir de esta pandemia, este diagnóstico se acentúa y se vuelve mucho más relevante el papel de nuestras organizaciones. El diagnóstico incluye también una mirada introspectiva sobre la necesidad de fortalecer en la acción nuestros principios, fundamentalmente el sexto, que nos invita a intercooperar en beneficio de nuestros asociados y de todas nuestras comunidades. En un mundo donde se siguen construyendo muros, nuestra acción ejemplar es tender puentes. Por eso reafirmamos en este documento que cada uno de los mil millones de miembros de los tres millones de cooperativas que hay en el mundo tiene que contribuir a que este modelo funcione en interés de la sostenibilidad económica, social y ambiental de la humanidad y de nuestra casa común, nuestro planeta Tierra. Y reafirmamos también que el modelo cooperativo es una forma correcta y plenamente probada de satisfacer todas las necesidades económicas, sociales y culturales de las personas. Hoy más que nunca, tenemos un rol clave en torno de desafíos como el futuro del trabajo, el cambio climático, el hábitat digno y la equidad de género. Permítanme destacar algunos puntos más de este plan estratégico que creo que pueden ayudarnos a entender mejor cómo le podemos dar forma entre todos a esta segunda década cooperativa. Decía antes que en esta proyección quisimos extender la visión 2020. En ese sentido, también recuperamos los cinco puntos que ustedes conocen como parte del blueprint que nos guió hasta ahora. Para eso, hemos integrado cada uno de aquellos cinco pilares en los cuatro temas clave de este nuevo plan estratégico. El primero de estos temas es la promoción de la identidad cooperativa y es el que amplía y extiende el pilar de la identidad, precisamente, pero también el de marco legal, porque el reconocimiento de las cooperativas en los marcos normativos de cada país está estrechamente relacionado con la naturaleza particular de empresas sin fines de lucro, gestionadas democráticamente y orientadas al bien común. El segundo tema es el crecimiento del movimiento cooperativo y da continuidad a los pilares de marco legal y de capital, de manera que podamos expandir la membresía e impulsar la creación de nuevas cooperativas en múltiples sectores. El tercer tema es la cooperación entre cooperativas. Como les decía antes, este es un tema crucial para consolidar lo que creemos que es la mayor red global de empresas a favor del desarrollo sostenible. Aquí entra en juego el pilar de participación, que está mencionado en el Blueprint. Finalmente, el cuarto tema es la contribución al desarrollo sostenible mundial, 
y extiende el pilar de sostenibilidad del Plan 2020, redoblando ahora los esfuerzos de cara a los desafíos globales de sostenibilidad económica, social y medioambiental. Cada uno de los cuatro temas reúne una serie de objetivos estratégicos y de iniciativas para poder ser realizados en la próxima década. Antes de despedirme, los invito a consultar el plan en la página web de la ASI y ver ustedes mismos cómo pueden ponerlo en marcha en Filipinas. Como dije antes, el aporte que cada uno de nuestros miembros pueda realizar desde su país, desde su región, es fundamental para que este plan que elaboramos entre todos nos sirva a todos en su aplicación concreta. De esa manera, estaremos sin dudas haciendo una contribución extraordinaria a la sostenibilidad de un mundo que necesita con urgencia un paradigma de cooperación, de solidaridad, de paz y de justicia social. Les agradezco nuevamente que me hayan invitado a compartir estas ideas con ustedes. Les deseo que tengan una excelente jornada y les envío a la distancia un fuerte abrazo cooperativo. Thank you for the leadership you have been providing, ICA, in the global uh, cooperative movement. It is indeed fitting for cooperatives to register and use the co-op mark to mark our identity, contribute to world sustainable um, sustainability, and commit to co-op values and principles, and to build bridges among 1 billion members and 3 million cooperatives. Let us have one voice in showing that the cooperative is the model preferred by the people for us to continue to grow and develop as a social enterprise alternative. Back to you, Edwin. Yes, uh, indeed, Mom Seni, it was a very moving message coming from the International Cooperative Alliance president, especially uh, in the coming uh, decades. Uh, of course, uh, after the video message, we will have a live uh, presentation. Uh, He is the regional director for Asia Pacific in April 2014. And as uh, Mr. Ayer has over 25 years of experience managing international development operations and overseeing multiple country offices, including experience building, new offices, from the ground up, from the bottom up. Uh, he worked in India in cooperative development before moving abroad to work on Asian regional concerns for overseas agencies, and in particular, in Afghanistan, Bangladesh, India, Korea, Mongolia, Nepal, Pakistan, the Philippines, and Sri Lanka. Napakarami po niyang pinuntaan na. He has worked with the Aga Khan Rural Support Program, Action Aid India, International Development Exchange, and the Asia Foundation. Because of these ex rich experiences, uh, he will be our main speaker for today to discuss the five ICA dimensions or the blueprint that were uh, discussed earlier by uh, Chair Gary and President Ariel Guarco. May we now welcome the Regional Director of the International Cooperative Alliance, Asia Pacific, Mr. Balu Ayer. Mr. Balu? Uh, thank you, Edwin. Uh, am I audible? Yes, uh, Mr. Balu, you're okay. audible. OK, uh, thank you. and. Uh, a very good morning to everyone. Uh, thank you very much for inviting the ICA to be part of your uh, Cooperative Month celebration. And congratulations on the uh, lobbying successfully to have the month of October uh, declared as the Cooperative Month. Uh, ideally, we should have been celebrating this in person and I was also expecting that I would get a new t-shirt this year, 
but given that's not the case, so I decided to wear the one which I already had in solidarity with you all. Uh, I think the pandemic has uh, really uh, tilted the world upside down. And this forum that we are having via Zoom is a reflection on uh, how uh, things have changed. Uh, general assemblies would be a time when we would all meet in person, uh, exchange ideas, share a meal, and look forward and plan with each other. Uh, but that physical interaction is not there. But the advantage is we are using technology. Uh, even though we are all in, not only in different places in the Philippines itself, but we are also uh, having this across country. So technology and its use has been one of the advantages or the benefits of this pandemic. Uh, the previous speakers, starting from the chairman, uh, Ravenera, have spoken about the blueprint, and even President Ariel Guarco has uh, elaborated on the pillars and the theme. I'll, uh, in my presentation, uh, try to bring in and, uh, the Asia-Pacific perspective. It's, uh, we had started to look at the uh, Asia-Pacific region strategy uh, once the General Assembly had approved the ICA strategy in Kigali last year. Uh, we wanted to ensure that we took that strategy and uh, took it to the region to see how we can adapt and adopt it. And we had started this uh, uh, in the month of February, early March. And then when the pandemic struck, we had to give it a pause. But in the interim, we've uh, looked into it and we've come up with some broad outline. So this is a very good opportunity for me and for the region to be able to present to you all to get your feedback. And I think uh, that's important for us to see how we uh, ensure that the strategy which uh, President Ariel Guarco said is not just an ICA strategy, but a strategy which we all need to be putting in place in order to ensure that the entire cooperative movement takes it forward and uh, we are working in, in sync. Uh, let me see if I, uh, I hope the screen comes up. So the ICA is calling this the advancing people-centered enterprises. Uh, they have chosen the time frame to be from 2020 to 2030. And the reason for choosing 2030, not only is it a decade, but it also marks the uh, end for the sustainable development goal. And that was mentioned uh, previously that the world uh, starting from 2015 uh, has set itself a target by 2030 to achieve, achieve the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, which cover a range of uh, points which affect individuals and humanity as a whole, right from uh, ensuring that no one, no, there is no poverty, people are not hungry, there is uh, education for all, health assured, gender equality, work, decent workplace, peace on earth. So there are these 17 sustainable development goals and they end in 2030. So the ICA strategy also is looking at uh, till 2030. So the, just in terms of a bit of a background on the ICA, uh, we were established in 1895 to advance the cooperative enterprise model. And this year, in 2020, we are celebrating 125 years of the ICA. It is a momentous occasion. Uh, and we had originally planned that uh, we would all meet uh, in Seoul in December uh, to celebrate the 125 years of uh, the ICA through a Congress where we would discuss issues which are affecting Congress, especially looking at the issue of how can we 
deepen the cooperative identity which differentiates cooperatives from other enterprises but uh, that is not to be so the global board has decided that it will now be held next year in 2021 in december again it will be in seoul in korea so it's a great honor for us in the region to be hosting a congress which will be looking at uh, celebrating 125 years of ica uh the ica as the apex organization for cooperatives represents over 315 cooperative federation across 111 countries we as a movement have over a billion members uh when we look at the over 3 million enterprises which are there worldwide and the global turnover of corpora of the top 300 cooperatives every year the ica comes out with the world cooperative monitor where we rank the top 300 cooperatives and the top 300 cooperatives together have an annual turnover of around 2.1 trillion us dollars which makes it the sixth or seventh largest economy in the world so we have a history we have a global presence we have our numbers and we have the economic clout but still there is a lot of work for us to do and the pandemic has uh, shown the need for this all for alternatives and cooperatives are well positioned uh, to leverage on the uh, opportunity which is there uh the ica works to unite promote and develop cooperatives and we do that through our member engagement uh, providing uh, developing leaders and advocating for the cooperative values and principles and developing uh, sustainable uh, partnerships ensuring that there is growth so our main as ica our job is to see how we can unite promote and develop cooperatives worldwide and in the asia pacific region we have close to 109 members from 32 countries and we have 11 members from the philippines so i'd like to thank each one of y'all and thank philippines for being such an active uh part of the ica not only at the global level but also at the regional level we did a scan uh, while this pandemic was going on we did a scan of the environment uh, to see how what the impact was having uh, on cooperatives on members on ica uh, so it's not just in terms of uh, one element we because uh, ica and its members when we work it's a continuum we work right from the cooperatives individual cooperatives moving up to a, whatever the administrative level is to the national level to the regional level and to the global level so it's a continuum on which we work and so the impact again is across so when we looked at the cooperative businesses uh, impact on cooperatives we could see that there was a disruption in the business which resulted in loss of livelihood uh, loss of revenue but this varied by sector in many countries given the lockdown uh work from home restrictions travel restrictions we were uh, we were all we had to be at home so some of the agriculture and allied sectors proved to be essential along with the health sector uh, in order to ensure that the system was functioning so the impact on agriculture consumption uh and some of the banking services which were considered essential it was not as much when we compared with the worker cooperatives the services cooperatives and some other forms they still continue the restrictions continue to remain in many countries at varying levels so we are still seeing that worker cooperatives the services sector especially tourism uh and allied sectors uh, you can name uh, restaurants uh, other forms all are still severely impacted because of the uh, pandemic so it's very from sectors and all this has also resulted uh, for members a uh, loss of revenue uh, livelihood health unfortunately uh, the pandemic has taken away a lot of life so it's impacted health but it also had the effect of mental health with people being stuck at home having to uh, being restricted in what they can do 
uh, a big uh, uh, burden is falling on their health, uh, mental health too. Women have been negatively impacted and continue to be because work from home brings not only office work or work which they were doing outside to the home, but you can't still do away with the homework per se. So women have had a double whammy when you look at how the pandemic has uh, impacted them. And of course, it's also been taking a toll on their health. And youth, it's not mentioned here, but again, uh, youth and cooperatives are also have been negatively impacted. When we looked at what this would mean for uh, impact in terms of our members, we see that there is again uh, income loss due to subscription uh, because when members get affected, uh, they are unable to contribute. And so the income for the apexes and federations drop. In many countries, the income from government, many of our members would rely on the government to support them, but given the government have been, uh, have had to divert some of their resources to more uh, the health and getting the economy up and running. Uh, income from the government itself has dropped. And there is, in all this, I think there is a greater awareness about solidarity. And that's been reflected in Philippines by the work that you all have done, the tremendous work that you all have done and are continuing to do, not only for your members, but also for the community at large. So I think the awareness about solidarity has gone up. On the ICA and the ICAP, again, we've also seen a drop in subscription, but then it's so far it's not been to the level which uh, we, were, we, were, we had feared. But then we see that this will be a continuing issue because the impact of the uh, pandemic is going to continue. Uh, many organizations would have had a certain reserves which they would have been using up. But then when the income is not coming in, the future stream is going to get affected. So there'll be foresee there'll be a drop in subscription. Retention and addition of members, additions may drop, but then our challenge would be to see how we continue to retain our members. Uh, the restriction on travel has prevented us from uh, the normal uh, travel related work across countries though in country the restrictions are being removed but across countries uh, it's getting affected and what this would mean is some of the activities which we do usually at a regional level uh, or a sub-regional level the meeting the training the workshops seminars etc they get affected so what is it that we should be doing uh, though we moved online uh, we've taken our training We've taken our workshops online, but we need to be thinking in terms of how do we continue to perform as long as some of the restrictions remain in place. In all this, I think the impact has been there, but then we've also seen that there are opportunities which have emerged. The emphasis on local and community, I think that it's been shown that uh, we need to be looking more inward. It's not inward in a very narrow sense, inward that what are the resources within us that we can uh, make use of? How do we look at us as a community? The relevance becomes much more important. We've seen there is an acceleration in adoption of technology. So how do cooperatives get into it? One of the things when we talked about cooperatives in many countries was that we were slow in adopting technology, but then now this is forced upon us. So how do we accelerate technology? How do we use it to ensure that our business operations, can, uh, we are able to deliver it in a much more efficient manner. The scope of cooperative business in the informal economy, I think that's also increased, especially in a country like India, during the pandemic, during the lockdown, we saw that millions and millions of workers, informal workers were badly affected and many of them had to move out from cities back to their villages because there were no work in the cities. When they went back to the villages, again, it was a very new experience. Uh, there was no work there too. So they've been badly affected. And when we look at uh, cooperatives in general, uh, we tend to be more in the agriculture sector, in the consumer sector, in the banking credit sector.
but there aren't too many cooperatives across in the social sector, in the services sector. So there is an opportunity again uh, for us to be looking at some of these uh, areas which have been badly affected. And finally, there is opportunity for us to look at it in terms of the worker buyout in many countries, given the stimulus packages which governments have put in place, there is opportunity where workers are coming together and saying, we would like to buy out companies uh, or start worker cooperatives and also looking at uh, the social cooperatives in the health sector. Uh, we've seen so how health was so important uh, and the opportunities for cooperatives here. And in terms of looking at some of the issues around aging uh, education. So there are immense opportunities which the, it has thrown up. Not that these were not there, but these have accelerated. And when we looked at the region and tried to do uh, what would be as we call the SWOT to see what are the strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats, we see that the strengths are cooperatives are diverse. They operate across sectors and industries. So if one gets affected, then it's possible that some others uh, could uh, step up. But then uh, there is opportunity there for cooperation, and which uh, again, Dr. Ariel Guarco, Chairman Ravenera, others mentioned that the importance of cooperation becomes uh, among cooperators becomes important. We see also that uh, in many countries, governments are starting to mention more about cooperators and the need to be looking at alternatives, and which is a good thing. Uh, the cooperative business model also is resonating well in terms of its self-help and cooperation. And we also have our network of members, which is our big strength. On the weakness, we see that uh, we could be more uh, business and entrepreneurial driven. We tend to be much more, uh, that tends to get downplayed. So how do we ensure cooperatives are by definition enterprises? So how do we uh, give more emphasis on that. In the region, again, cooperatives are in varying stages of development. In some places, it's very well developed. Some places, it's still in a nascent stage. Some sectors, we are well developed. Some sectors, we are not there. So there is a varying degree. So how do we ensure uh, the next point in terms of cooperating amongst ourselves to lift everyone up? Another weakness is the lack of consistent and reliable data and knowledge products. So how do we ensure that? And uh, the, I mentioned this in terms of uneven sub-regional growth and development. The opportunities in addition to those which I mentioned before are in terms of position cooperatives as dynamic and entrepreneurial to youth. Uh, youth, like I said, have been badly affected. There is a loss of jobs. There's lots of livelihood opportunities, but then there is also the uh, thing to come together and see how we can uh, work together. And this is a great opportunity to present to you that cooperatives are entrepreneurial, are dynamic. The opportunities are again in terms of new areas which are emerging where we have the opportunity. Scope for cooperative business in the informal economy is another uh, area which I mentioned about. And the recognition of cooperatives, it's not just by the uh, government in many countries, but even international organizations. Uh, you look at the European Union, the Food and Agriculture Organization, the ILO, and others, they are also uh, talking more about cooperatives than the relevant. What are the threats? Uh, we look at it in terms of uh, when you have a global issue like the pandemic, it impacts everyone and cooperatives are not immune to that. So how do we, we say that cooperatives are resilient, but it's all the more important that we be prepared for such uh, occurrences will happen and how well prepared are these for be. The perception of uh, cooperatives in terms of image, internal go governance, corruption, I think that's an area where we need to pay more attention to. The shrinking presence of cooperatives in national economy. We say we want to make cooperatives dynamic. We want it to make it the fastest growing. But then uh, this has to be also balanced with the reality that there is a shrinking presence. So we, how do we ensure there is more growth? 
competition from other business entities. It's not just corporates, but there are new forms of social enterprises, the social solidarity economy. Uh, other players are there. And there is uh, competition coming from business entities, which are purely technology driven, uh, which don't require uh, much in terms of physical presence. So how do we address the competition? And interference and control by government is another area. On the one hand, in some countries, there is support. But on the other hand, you have interference and control by the government. So what all this translates into our current time is one, the success will depend on how we continuously innovate, how agile we are, how open we are to collaboration. Human welfare and sustainability will be front and center. And again, for cooperatives, we uh, define ourselves as being economic, social, and uh, environmental. So what we work because is becoming much and more important. Consumers also see uh, companies in a different light. They are looking at companies which have good will, which, have, uh, which can create trust, uh, which has a purpose. So again, this is an opportunity for us to put ourselves out there. Workers want more control over the workplace and have a say. Opportunity again for us. Governments are withdrawing from provision of social services. While it's becoming more and more important, we see there is more importance for health, more importance for education, but then the governments are withdrawing, so it creates space for us to, for cooperatives to step in. And for the young, when they are looking at a place where they can derive a sense of purpose and fulfillment, where it focuses on people and purpose and not just products and profit. So when you look at what the effect of the pandemic is and how it translates, we see that many of these resonate with what cooperatives are and what we stand for. So there is a tremendous opportunity for us uh, going ahead. But then at the same time, apart from perception, which I talked before, there is also issues which we need to be looking at. Opportunities are there outside, but we also need to look within and see how we uh, reform in order to be able to uh, capitalize on the opportunities. One is in terms of how consistently are the cooperative principles applied, and it varies greatly from region to region. There is a lot of liberalization going on, and this is not just in banking, but also in agriculture. In India recently, they've opened up agriculture. Earlier, it used to be restricted in terms of commodities which could be sold, where it could be sold, but now it's opened up. So the last mile advantage, uh, what we used to say in terms of we are the closest to people, we are closest to members. So that's getting lost. There are other people coming in. So that's a big threat. Uh, regulators and policymakers are also looking at what is an authentic cooperative and what is an inauthentic cooperative. And that's again an issue. There are, it's a reality and there is an issue. See, there is also a widening gap between management and members. How do we address that? I talked about the awareness and perception about cooperatives. And then in many places, we see that the initiatives are largely driven by individual efforts. It's, while we say we are collective, we see it's much more individually driven, be it a cooperative or a team. And then the strategy of copying what others are doing, rather than sticking to what we are and showing that that what matters, not just aping others. I think these are some issues uh, for us to consider from within. Uh, I'd like to use this opportunity, I think, to again congratulate you all for the National Cooperative Month and thank Representative uh, Kanama, the Senate Committee Chairperson, Senator Zubiri, Senator Hoverov, and Senator Gordon for all the work that they've done to push forward the bill. Uh, and in uh, connection with what uh, uh, the, we've, uh, this particular webinar, uh, we need to remember what Senator Zubiri has said, that how do we help Filipinos help themselves? And that's where I think cooperatives uh, can play an active part. And how do we institutionalize as part of the celebration, the principles and values? And 
uh, how do we make it known about the significant contribution that cooperatives are doing to poverty alleviation, community building, social justice, and economic growth. And for me, there is one question here among the many, is how are we going to measure ourselves? How are we going to show that from this year, when we are celebrating the cooperative month, when we look at look back next year, that how are we done? Uh, what is the difference that it has made? I think that's important in how we uh, move forward. In 2012, uh, the cooperative movement celebrated the International Year of Cooperatives, and many of you all took part in it. And the ICA used this opportunity to say, look, it's great that we are celebrating this year. Uh, we're all coming together, but how do we use this as an opportunity to look ahead? And so it, uh, grew, it so we decided to come out with a blueprint for a cooperative decade, which will look ahead to see how the three things which was mentioned before in terms of how cooperatives can be the fastest, the most recognized, the most preferred model, etc. So the uh, blueprint had five elements, five pillars in it, uh, which are participation and sustainability. And these were termed as the differentiator. This is what differentiates cooperatives from others in terms of how we participate, how we encourage participation of members and everyone in our cooperatives. And the sustainability element is what differentiates us. The two factors which we could, which could either inhibit cooperatives or facilitate are the legal framework and capital. And during the, uh, in the blueprint, while we talk about cooperative identity in terms of the, the uh, definition, values and principles, uh, it was decided that we'll also have a mark which will identify ourselves and which all of us can use where and which everyone can easily recognize. You can see that co-op mark on the bottom of my screen and also in the t-shirt where we are in the Philippines. Again, I'd like to congratulate Philippines. I think you all do a tremendous job in terms of promoting the, uh, the logo uh, through the t-shirts, through different materials. And that's, I think, a wonderful way uh, in which we can promote uh, our visibility among the general public. Uh, Dr. Ariel Guarco mentioned that now we are in the uh, second phase, the 2020 to 2030, where we are looking at the people-centered path for a second cooperative decade. And this, uh, the new strategy incorporates within it the elements of the blueprint. And he mentioned about how identity, uh, one is, uh, and there are four elements uh, broad themes. One is the promotion of the cooperative identity, which includes the identity pillar. He talked about the growth of the cooperative movement, which looks at the legal and capital pillar. Cooperation among cooperatives as part of the participation pillar and contribution to global sustainable development as part of the sustainability pillar. So in the Asia Pacific region, we looked at uh, the uh, impact and the situation in the region. We looked at the blueprint and also the ICA, uh, the strategy. And we said, so how do we, uh, what are the elements? How do we incorporate that? And what are the things that we could do in, uh, uh, in a different way? Uh, or is there a need for us to look at things slightly differently? And so we've come up with uh, four uh, areas for ourselves, or the four strategic elements for ourselves. One is how do we promote the statement of cooperative identity? Second is how do we accelerate growth of cooperatives in the region? And these two are very similar to what the ICA strategy has. The third element we are looking at is in terms of how do we strengthen cooperatives as business enterprises and development actors? So we want to be giving emphasis also to the business element of what we are until unless our businesses survive, our businesses grow, we are not there. So we need to be also uh, emphasizing on the business element. And this is also important when we want to attract the younger people 
uh, into the cooperative uh, fold. And at the same time, we are also development actors because we are contributing to the sustainable development goals. We are contributing to the national strategy on development. So we have both parts to play. It's not just the development part, but also how we emphasize the business part. And the fourth element or part of our strategy is to how do we serve as a regional losses? How do we serve as a resource for knowledge, expertise, and action? So these are the four broad strategic elements that we are looking at in the region. And in the next four slides, I'll try to break up what we, uh, how and what we would like to do in each of these. So when we talk about the statement of cooperative identity, again, we are looking at here at four elements. One is legislation. And I mentioned before, in uh, the way cooperatives are viewed in legislation varies from country to country. In many places, cooperatives are looked at very much as welfare or development. The business element is not emphasized. And these days, when we want to emphasize the uh, startup up, up, uh, are popular among the young, uh, there are uh, different forms of enterprises coming in, but there is no role for cooperatives there. And there is also the issue of membership. In many cooperatives, in many countries, the minimum members required can vary from 100. In some places, it can be five. So again, it's consistent. What we feel is it needs to vary depending on the type of business it is. So there is a lot of need to advocate for legislation. So that's one area. And there are a few elements which we have listed there. The second to promote the identity is to spread the awareness. One is the mark, which you all are doing. But then how do we promote uh, cooperatives as dynamic, modern, entrepreneurial? While regular meeting our needs at the community level, but we need to also promote it. So that's an, a spreading awareness. And spreading awareness by including it is part of the policy agenda, not only of governments, but also of national agencies. In order to promote the statement of identity, we also need to focus on education. While we are doing education, we are doing training internally, we need to see how it can be done outside be it in schools, universities, cooperatives, how do we look at it in terms of curriculum development, research in the research institutions. So all this is part of the expanding education, that's the third element. And the fourth is in terms of platforms, strengthening platforms, for we need to have different avenues where we are able to talk about the identity, involve different players. It's not just talking amongst ourselves, but how do we promote it outside. So we are looking at our minister's conference, the registrar's forum, creating parliamentary forum. And this is there in a few countries. In Australia, they have a parliamentarian forum. In the Philippines, you have parliamentarians uh, representing cooperatives and promoting the voice with uh, legislators. And it, so is the case in some other countries. So I think there is the opportunity to create parliamentarian forums which promotes cooperatives in each country. So these are what we are looking at in terms of the four elements of the identity. When it comes to growth of cooperatives across the region, one, we need to increase members, but more importantly for me, we need to retain our members so that uh, retention is a reflection of for others that this is stable and that can increase members. So how do we continue to do that? We need to, I think, develop the ecosystem. Uh, again, how do we, and this comes to the element of cooperation among cooperatives. How do we strengthen, uh, say, uh, the agriculture cooperatives with credit cooperatives, agriculture cooperatives with consumer cooperatives? How do we develop this ecosystem? I think is important. How do we look at new areas in terms of platform cooperatives, emerging cooperatives, is how we can develop the ecosystem further. How do we, in order to accelerate growth, we need to bring new members. And uh, while we continue to support existing members, we also need to be bringing in new members. And the new members, youth provide the opportunity. And uh, President Ariel Guarco, mentioned some time back 
that when we talk about youth, we always talk as though it is in the future. But for, he said, it's not in the future. The youth are the present. We need to start from today. We need to start from now to see how we can bring youth into the movement. So what are the different ways in which we can bring youth into the movement so that that leads to growth, not only in terms of members, but also it could lead to growth in terms of new cooperators. And how do we deepen coordination? In order to promote growth, we need to be coordinated. We need to engage uh, amongst ourselves. And the elements which we put here is, I think, looking more uh, internally in terms of how do we engage with our board of directors? How do we strengthen our committees? How do we enhance value uh, to our members? So, and if we are able to provide more value, we are able to then accelerate growth. So I think uh, these are the elements which we are looking at in terms of growth. In order to, the third element is how do we look at cooperatives as business enterprises and development actors? And I think that uh, there, it's how do we deepen the economic role? How do we strengthen uh, the value chain? How do we promote the products of cooperatives through different networks can help to deepen the economic role? And this not just within a country, but across countries, across the region. How do we kickstart entrepreneurship? And in the ICA, we have uh, ongoing programs, the Global Cooperative Entrepreneurship Program, but we're also looking at how do we incubate, how do we accelerate, how do we create more models. The, on the development side, the sustainable development, that's at our core. We are advancing uh, the role of cooperatives in sustainable development and the sustainable development goals. And yesterday I had the opportunity uh, to talk uh, with members of CLIMBS about the role of cooperatives in the SDGs. And the point which I was making there is, when you look at cooperatives, we are working on, there are 17 sustainable development goals, and we are working on each one of them. But then we don't actively talk to our members about how we are, uh, about the SDGs, and we also don't talk to the outside world in terms of how we are contributing to the SDGs. We work on gender development, so we are working on SDG 5. But how are we actively telling our members that, look, we are contributing to SDG 5, and also telling the other outside that the role that we are playing. So I think uh, there is more, while we are doing, there is more we need to be promoting the work that we are doing in order for us, uh, for national agencies, to recognize us as part of the sustainable development players. The one other thing which I mentioned yesterday during my presentation was that when we look at the sustainable development goals, uh, this is uh, built upon the Millennium Development Goals, which was there till 2000, uh, in the 2000s. The one difference, key difference with the sustainable development goals is that each country has to report on how it's doing on the implementation of the SDGs. So the Philippines has reported twice in 2016 and in 2019. And they have mentioned cooperatives, but then when we compare that there are 26,000 plus cooperatives, a million members in the Philippines, and the way we mentioned in the VNR, it's, there is a big dissonance. So I think there is a very active role for federations, for PCC as the representative body to see how it promotes the work that cooperatives are doing on SDGs to the national government and to the focal point in the Philippines. And that's the only way in which there, there's going to be more recognition. And finally, how do we increase our engagement uh, with research institutions? How do we encourage young researchers to come in? How do we get in new training? How do we collaborate? And uh, the last point, it's I think the fund to meet emergencies. Uh, when we look at the Asia Pacific region, uh, the pandemic apart, this, this region is the one which is most, most disaster prone when you compare it to other regions. And what happens in a disaster is that uh, there is immediate impact and 
there aren't many resources available readily to help to come in from the cooperatives to make sure that uh, things can uh, uh, members can pick up and move on we whenever a disaster happens we raise a uh, we call, uh, put out an appeal and try to raise funds but that takes time so i think we need to start seriously looking at how do we create a disaster fund which is able to address uh, any exigencies that arise and finally i think the fourth element is we need to be more dynamic in terms of knowledge creation in terms of expertise and again i'd like to thank uh, our members in the philippines you all have been very ready in terms of providing your human resources whenever we watch for during our trainings during our workshop during our seminar i think there is more that we need to do on that and for action so and for this we are looking at in terms of how do we create knowledge product how do we actively collaborate with uh, other players with the multilateral agencies the csos the universities how do we actively take part in research for it's only through research that we bring in new body of knowledge and we are able to do things new so we need to actively do that and collaborate how do we strengthen our human capacity how do we focus we tend to do a lot of training but then do we need to be looking at trainings which are more forward looking on digitization improving governance etc how do we strengthen women leaders i think that's going to be key for cooperatives to distinguish itself from other enterprises is our women we have very active participation at a member level but then as we go up there is a diminishing return so how do we ensure that women leaders are strengthened and again the philippines can is a leader given the gender uh, the guard policies that you all have the way in which you all are actively uh, ensuring that it's not just on paper but you are actually having to demonstrate that and also through your laboratory cooperative bringing in more use so i think uh, you all are doing a good job in terms of developing human capacity but then there is more that we can do and finally to do all this we need to be have resources we can have very good plans but if we don't have resources then it's very difficult to sustain ourselves so how do we ensure that there is a, uh, resources are available to do all this so i think this broadly captures what i wanted to tell and for me the questions again a few more questions one i had before in terms of how do we measure are there missing elements where do you think the icap as a regional office should be focusing which are the areas where we can work together icap and member can work together and where is it that icap can assist members i think these are some of the broad questions which i had as we move forward to strengthen and form up our strategy and getting more input from you all will definitely help in making this a much more stronger document and finally i just want to remind everyone that we were supposed to have the congress this year to celebrate our 125 years but now this has been postponed to uh, by year it will now take place uh, from december 1st to 3rd 2021 it will still happen in seoul in korea and it's going to happen in the region so i'd like to even though it's a one year away i'd like to uh, uh, welcome you all and hope that uh, you all can join us uh, during the 2021 congress to promote the cooperative identity so thank you very much i'll uh, stop there and i'm happy to take questions and i'm looking forward to the reactions and i'm sure i'll get a lot of uh, input which will help us to strengthen this document and strengthen how we can move forward uh, in order to advance cooperatives as people centered enterprises so thank you very much thank you mr balu ayer for that very comprehensive analysis of the global situation challenges and opportunities for the cooperative movement indeed mga co fellow uh, cooperators mr balo ayer is a true blood leader of the cooperative movement now uh, for the next portion of our forum we will 
uh, divide the five discussants, uh, we would like to request uh, each discussant to uh, prepare their views and thoughts uh, in five minutes each. So to start with, I uh, will call Mam Seni to, to introduce the first discussant, Mam Seni. Okay, Edwin. Cooperatives are a better social and economic um, alternative because they give individuals an opportunity to participate through ownership, which makes them inherently more engaging, more productive, and both more useful and more relevant in the contemporary world. The aim is to elevate participation within membership and governance to a new whole level. And to give us his views on the presentation of Mr. Balu Ayer on participation, may we call back the true, an, another true-blooded cooperator, the chairperson of the Philippine Cooperative Center, Dr. Gary Leonardo. Uh, thank you again, uh, Jenny, and thank you, Edwin. Thank you, Regional Director Balu, for a very comprehensive presentation. I was actually tasked by Edwin and uh, Zenny to respond to Balu's presentation and partly also to President Ariel's video message as this relate to the participation pillar of the ICA blueprint. As in the case of PCC, which has three basic aspirations, namely to integrate or consolidate, to unite and to transform, ICA, as we noted from Balu's presentation, has a similar three-pronged aspiration to unite, to promote, and to develop. The unity aspiration is anchored on member engagement, or more specifically, on democratic member participation, which in turn is expected to result in the promotion of cooperation among cooperatives. So how is member participation made manifest? What are the two most common forms of member participation? First to me is co-ownership of a cooperative as distinct from other forms of enterprise. Second is members participation in the governance of a cooperative, particularly during general assemblies and election of officers. So how then is this ICA participation pillar linked to the seven cooperative principles? I would also say that the participation pillar rests on practically all of the seven cooperative principles, but particularly on three of those principles, which to me are first, democratic member control. That is, the members participate actively in formulating policies and in making decisions for their respective cooperatives. Again, specifically during general assemblies. Just as a side note, Balu emphasized the need to have women and the youth engage more. Although in the Philippines, I personally don't think that engaging women in co-ops is that big a concern because the membership of most co-ops and I think even leadership is predominantly women. The concern is really more in terms of involving the youth because as we may all know, the cooperative sector is an aging population, both in terms of leadership and membership. Second is member economic participation. That is, the members contribute equitably to the cooperative's capital and share equitably as well in its net surplus after allocating for certain statutory funds, such as GRF or gross uh, or general reserve fund, the CETF and the CDF. And third is cooperation among cooperatives. That is, the members' participation within their respective cooperatives extends to their cooperatives partnership with other cooperatives as well as with other organizations, including the government. This was eloquently expounded on by Balu in his presentation. And this is one cooperative principle that has really been, or that has really become very pronounced, especially in the midst of the current pandemic. We see cooperatives working together to provide different modes of assistance 
to their needy fellow cooperatives and communities. This came mostly in the form of food packs, PPEs, and medical supplies. Within cooperatives, similar forms of assistance have been extended to individual members topped off by financial reliefs. Related to this, many of us had the opportunity to listen to the very uplifting presentation made the other day by, by Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nograles that reflects the government's response to the pandemic and from which we could specifically note the following highlights. First, cooperatives must recognize the need for change and adapt accordingly, not only within, but I would say also among organizations. Second, a collective leadership should rise, which is receptive to and supportive of change. Third, cooperatives may lead the way in providing linkages, especially with respect to value chain initiatives. Fourth, cooperative types and business activities must be aligned to serve emerging needs, particularly in the light of the new normal. And fifth, a whole of government and a whole of society approach must be pursued. So how then do we contextualize all this to our Philippine cooperative setting? I will have to give due credit to our director priest in the PCC board, Father Anton Pascual, for much of what I will be sharing shortly. Father, I would think you're around. But anyway, to start yes, off- I'm around. Okay. As I said, I'm giving you due credit for this, Father. <laughs> And to start off, at higher levels of cooperation among cooperatives, we have five strategic business clusters that we at PCC envision to be made up of national federations together with those regional federations that will pass the standards of business performance. On the other hand, we presently have one advocacy and education cluster that we envision to be made up of regional tertiary unions and which will function first as the representative, second as the advocate, and third as the resource center of the cooperative sector. Can we show the next slide, uh, G? There. An additional cluster may need to be formed in the eventually, which will focus on the political advocacy of the sector. Can we move to the next slide? In short, the business agenda of the sector will be pushed by the five federation-led clusters, while the advocacy, research, and training agenda will be pushed by the two other union-led, academic-supported clusters. In particular, the political advocacy cluster will closely coordinate with the Senate and House committees on cooperatives development. The seven clusters as envisioned will serve as the foundation for the next higher levels of cooperation that is at the sectoral apex and national alliance levels. The function of this apex and of the national alliance will be primarily, if not solely, for consultation purposes, particularly with CDA. With this, we see that the partnership between CDA and the cooperative sector will be further strengthened, specifically as regards the sector's development. On the other hand, at the lower levels of cooperation, all primaries will be enjoined to become members of the unions and federations in their respective areas of operation and business pursuits. We see this as the most effective way of ensuring participation and pursuing representation for all within this agile, innovative, and collaborative program-based organization that we envision. We strongly feel also that addressing both our business recovery agenda and our advocacy agenda in the context of the present crisis will be greatly facilitated by such programmatic organization. In that light, and particularly in the light of the organizational model 
that I have just shared here, I would dare state at this point that PCC presents itself as the evolving national alliance with its strategic goals evidently weaving into the four themes and action programs of ICA. This is over and above the track record, particularly in advocacy, as well as the level of acceptance and system-wide sphere of influence that PCC has established over the years within and for the cooperative sector. With that, thank you all for listening. Thank you, Chair Gary. Maybe ask Edwin now to present or to introduce the next reactor. Thank you, Ma'am Semi. Uh, there will be an open forum after the uh, remaining four discussants will be given their uh, respective time. So please, uh, part po na po ang ating mga concerns and clarifications because we will be given uh, time to uh, to be recognized. In the meanwhile, uh, the next topic is about sustainability. Cooperatives are better because their business model creates greater economic, social, and environmental sustainability. To discuss this uh, topic, it's no other than the CEO and president of Kabisig Savings and Agriculture Agri-Development Cooperative. He served the government for 25 years as supervisor of the Department of Agrarian Reform. And uh, he was deputized organizer of cooperatives since 1978 by the Department of Agriculture. Currently, he is the chief executive officer uh, and president of Primary Cooperative, as I mentioned a while ago, and member of the board of the Philippine Cooperative uh, Center. Uh, he is also the chairperson of the municipal Cooperative Development Council and Vice Chairperson of uh, the PCC and member of the National Anti-Poverty Commission Cooperative Sector. Please welcome Manong Vice Loret Ramiro. Thank you, Edwin. Uh, good morning to everybody, especially to Director Balo. Uh, it's hard to be a second reactor. And uh, because some of my uh, topic were uh, given by our chairperson. However, I just want to uh, give information and reaction on the blueprint of ICA program sector chess. Now, uh, I would like to inform Director Balo that uh, we have 26 strong national organization at present in PCC. And we have eight regional federations and we have 21 billionaires or big primary cooperatives. Uh, Gary stated a while ago that we have six pillars based from Republic Act 11364. And now I belong to agri sector. So in this item, sustainability topic, I would like to give some information to Director Balo that uh, uh, especially in a topic that is deepened economic rule of the cooperatives. On the item of uh, agri-cluster, in the Philippines, I would like to inform Director Balo that there are many models in the Philippines as a resources in coming up with a common, globally competitive entrepreneur in the Philippines. This was already included in the strategic plan of PCC 
One example is uh, the strengthening of cooperative as business enterprise and development of actors, especially in online trade network. We have a member that uh, that's supposed to be or be the model and actor for online trade network. That is the Federation of Sustainable Development Cooperative. I know uh, Director Balu that uh, the manager of this cooperative presented their models in one of Asia Pacific conference. Another one is uh, the PCC is now identifying these actors per clusters. So finance cluster, we have Father Anton there and other big cooperatives. The other sectors, we have one model in a local sur, uh, that is Nueva Segovia Consortium of Cooperatives. They have uh, diverse and integrated agri-development projects and supposed to be duplicated to other parts of the country as a kickstart entrepreneur. The only missing here, uh, Director Bolo, is that the kickstart for small, micro, and medium agri-cooperatives. So it is now the work of PCC to at least follow the principle of big brothers helping the baby and the small brother, especially uh, Father Anton. So this is a big challenge for PCC. Now the sustainable development for this pillar, especially agri, I think finance cluster they are now developed and supposed to be the resource of other cluster to be developed in the future. So this sustainable development, there are models and actors that were given recognition by the government. So I suppose to suggest that PCC and ICAAP should help together and maintain these resources, improve these resources, then let us duplicate to other areas as a reference for micro and small to become big. Another one is uh, increase of engagement for research, for education, and collaboration to other stakeholders. At present, PCC is now active in collaboration. And there was a recommendation from the education and advocacy group or cluster that the cooperative movement should develop a book as a reference for any activities, services, and programs of the government. So again, that is a challenge for PCC, for us in PCC, to produce that book to be used as a, ref, as a resource for everybody, especially this micro, small, and medium cooperative. So, my time is only five minutes, and uh, there is a question in the report of Director Balu, what is missing there? I hope uh, the leadership of cooperative in the Philippines should visit also uh, these models in different countries, so that in the end, we could use this to develop our cooperative in the Philippines. There are models here, but uh, I think there are more developed models in different countries. The only problem, the only rich cooperative 
could afford to be cheap notes. Model enterprises. How about the small, micro father, the small and the middle? So in these areas, I think ICA and IP and Asia Pacific could help on this area. Because we cannot learn from around our province. We could learn something from other provinces and other countries as a reference or resource for development. Another one is to sincerely develop this value chain strategy. This value chain, stra chain strategy is good for agriculture. And we are only selling our product or crops as a raw material. And there is no added value for that for our members. So there are models in different countries, especially in Bangkok and South Korea. I should propose that ICAAP should assist us in going there so that there will be a duplication in the Philippines. Moreover, uh, Director Balo, congratulations for helping me during the time that I am in Malaysia. And I hope uh, my reaction, information, and recommendation will be considered. Thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you, Manong Vice Loret, for that very uh, insightful uh, reactions based on sustainability. Uh, I'm sure uh, we have to learn as well other models no, from, from other countries for us to, to grow further and at the same time uh, pick the best experiences and practices of those models in, in those countries. Thank you, Manung Bais. Uh, Ma'am Steny? Participation and sustainability explain why cooperatives offer a better way of doing business. So the next discussant will delve on the identity which is defined by the core values and principles of cooperation and needs to be communicated through a powerful and distinctive message to ensure that cooperatives are seen and understood by everybody from policymakers to the general public. The discussant is a chairperson of one cooperative insurance system of the Philippines. He is also the Radio Veritas president and Caritas Manila Executive Director, one of the outstanding Filipino awardee for the year 2016. He was ordained priest, so what better person no, to communicate, uh, to inform or to communicate identity to the cooperators that we have the father priest of the cooperative sector. He also is the chairperson and founder of Simbayana Ni Maria Community Development Foundation Inc the chairperson of the board of several cooperatives. He's also a member of the board of trustees of several non-government organizations. I don't know how he manages his time. Plus, of course, he holds, celebrates mass. And in the year 2010, he was a recipient of the or order of the Golden Heart Orden ng Gintong Puso, presidential award from the office of the president and in 2014, he received the AIM Alumni Achievement AAA International Award, the highest recognition given by the Asian Institute of Management to its outstanding alumni. He was also honored as the most outstanding cooperative leader by the Cooperative Development Authority, Gawad Parangal, in 2015. Please welcome Father Anton CT, or Delito, no? Father, no? Pascual, or Father A for short. Thank, thank you, Sammy. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat to all my dear cooperators. There are around 400 all over the country. It's an honor to share and to be part of this uh, historical moment uh, that we reflect on the ICA uh, and vision of the Cooperative 2030. And to our um, international leaders, Sir Ariel and Sir Balu, our uh, gratitude for uh, leading us you know, and showing us the cooperative vision 2030. And of course, my good friend, uh, partner in crime, <laughs> Sir Gary, and to all the board of PCC, the beautiful and uh, 
uh, visionary leaders of uh, PCC. Ang binigay po sa akin is scope identity. So I have only five minutes. Sabi ni Mark Twain, dalawa daw importanteng araw sa buhay natin. The day you were born and the day you discovered why you were born. Mark Twain, two important days in your life. The day you were born and the day you discovered why you were born. And this morning, what we're trying to reflect is uh, what is the cooperative identity? Now, we should be aware. We should um, embody. We should always... Uh, reflect once more to learn and learn and relearn what the cooperative identity is no because we are not a corporation we are not an ngo we are not a quasi government sabi nga ni isang cooperative leader jeepney cooperative sabi sa akin father ang coba ay quasi government sabi ko hindi siya gobyerno cooperative is a cooperative so what is our identity ang identity po natin uh, correct me if i'm wrong is the it is an ideology based social enterprise I define our cooperative as an ideology-based social enterprise. Okay, there are three identity that I would like to share with you. The first ex uh, uh, exposition is the co-op is a social enterprise. No, siya po hindi isang corporation. Ang corporation is a business enterprise. No, hindi siya NGO. Ang NGO is donation-based. Parang karitos Manila. Hindi din siya gobyerno. Government is legislation oriented. Okay, cooperative is a social enterprise. Ano ba yung social enterprise? It has three bottom line. Nat no po ang bottom line ng isang cooperative as a social enterprise. Three bottom line. Una is profitable. Hindi pa rin nalulugi. Pag nalulugi ang koop, palitan niyo yung board niyo. No, profitable in order to serve. No, pangalawa environmentally friendly. We must be pro environment. We don't destroy our planet. And third. We must have a social impact for the poor, uh, according to Principle Seven: Cooperation among cooperatives. Ito po yung triple bottom line. Now, walang ibang mga negosyante with your respect, but must be present in all cooperative enterprises. Three bottom line: It must be profitable. Meron tayong net surplus, at least six percent. No, meron po tayong uh, environmentally friendly, and third, social impact for the poor. Social impact for the poor. Kaya ang cooperative is really for the BOP, bottom of the pyramid. No? Tayo po ay, ang mayayaman, hindi sumasali sa co-op. No? Ang, ang mga cooperative po ay for middle class no? and for the bottom of the pyramid. Pangalawang identity natin, na my dear brothers and sisters, my dear cooperators, no? uh, number one is social enterprise. Number two, we are an ideology-based social enterprise. Ideology natin, sabi nga ni Mr. Balo, ay naka- at tungtong sa definition, values, and principles. We must always go back to our definition, values, and principles. Yan po ang ating ideology. Ang korporasyon, walang ideolohiya. Ang ibang mga NGO, wala masyadong ideolohiya. No? Tayo po may ideolohiya. Ang ideolohiya natin ay nakatungtong sa definition, values, and principles. We have seven principles. We have six values. No? At uh, we are not a corporation. Ang corporation is competitive independent profit oriented ang co-ops no we believe in leadership na one man one vote ang co ang corporation one man all the votes pero ang cooperative one man one vote and we believe in group leadership hindi lang isang tao nagdidikta group leadership pati ang chairman no he is part of the group leadership the first among equals no hindi angat ang chairman kaya ang aking, ang aking uh, pakiusap dapat para pareho ang per diem niyan hindi mataas ang per diem ng chairman Pantay pa yan. First among equals. Management. Kala niyo ba ang management sa cooperative, sabi nga sa Mondragon? Ang, ang sweldo daw ng general manager, pinakamataas sa sweldo ng general manager at sa pinakamababang sweldo, 6% lang ang diferensya. The difference between the salary of the lowest paid employee to the highest paid general manager should only be six times. Six times. Hindi tulad ng korporasyon, bukan 300 times ang pinagkaiba ng lowest employee to the CEO. Sa cooperative, that's why it's unique. Six, six times ang diferensya natin. Ownership natin, maximum 10%. We don't own 90% of the cooperative. Only 10%. No? And of course, uh, we believe in cooperation among cooperatives. Okay. We're not an NGO. Palagi ko mo sinasabi yan. We are not an NGO. Brothers and sisters, we are not an NGO. Mahalaga po sa atin yung self-help and self-responsibility. Hindi tayo humihingi ng pondo sa gobyerno. 
hindi tayo humihingi ng pondo sa gobyerno. Kaya natin tumayo sa sariling paa. Ang San Dionisio, lumaki, tumayo sa sariling paa. Ang Simbayanan ni Maria, lumaki, naging bilyonaryo, tumayo sa sariling paa. We believe in self-help and self-responsibility. We don't believe in grants. We don't believe in subsidy. We don't believe in donations. We are not an NGO. At pangatlo, we are not a quasi-government. No? Our cooperatives are influenced by market forces, supply and demand. The third identity ng ating cooperative, we believe in federations and unions. Yan po ang pinagkaiba natin. Wala ang NGO, wala ang korporasyon, at walang gobyerno. Koop lang ang meron nito. Uh, we have federations and unions as higher level of cooperation. The purpose of federations and unions is to unify the leadership of the co-op sector, transform the co-op sector as an ecosystem, interdependent, interrelated, interconnected, and consolidate the, res the resources of the co-op sector in a unified strategic vision. Union, non-business, ang ginagawa po niya, representation, advocacy, education, and resource center. At ang federation naman is a business integration, strategic position of business, for economies of scale and scope. The purpose of federation is to expand the products and services of the co-op to be available, accessible, affordable. And market challenge is 20% market penetration. So, bago tayo matapos, let me repeat. As a summary, what is the identity of the cooperative? The cooperative is an ideology-based social enterprise. No? And our identity is grounded in our definition, values, and principles. Meron po tayong ginagawang major workshop on uh, cooperative identity. Uh, we hired Bayan Academy uh, to formulate a workshop and a training module on cooperative identity. Uh, we have interviewed five cooperative leaders nationwide, five managers nationwide, and two academics. Matatapos po yan before the end of the year, and we will share with you this new module and workshop on the cooperative identity. So thank you very much, and God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Father A. Um, let me just repeat what you said that regarding Mark Twain when he said that there are two important days, the day you were born and the day you discover why you were born. And I think all these are already two important days that PCC or the co-op sector has been able to uh, realize. And that the cooperative is an ideology-based social enterprise. Thank you, Father A. Yes, Ma'am Seni, no? uh, napakahalaga po nung ipinahayag ng ating butihing pare at fellow cooperators, Father Anton, City Pascual. The next discussant uh, will discuss social capital. Cooperatives need access to capital if they are to be established, grow, and flourish. The aim is to secure reliable cooperative capital while guaranteeing member control. Our next discussant is the Chief Executive Officer of the National Confederation of Cooperatives. Uh, she has been working with the cooperative movement since 1993 with MASPEC. Uh, she was appointed the CEO of NATCO when the vacancy occurred in 2009. She has the privilege to have been exposed to various cooperative movements around the world. She has been a resource speaker in various international conferences, including as plenary panelists of the first International Summit of Cooperatives, breakout panelists in the World Council of Credit Unions and Asian Confederation of Credit Unions. She was the chairperson of the Code NGO DEN, the biggest coalition of NGO networks in the country. She had the chance to be the chair of the National Cooperative Development Council and Philippine Cooperative Center. Currently, she's a member of the Cooperative Sector Council of the National Anti-Poverty Commission, a chemical engineer, and a graduate of Master in Business Management of Asian Institute of Management uh, in Makati City. And take note of this, she was former member of the government negotiating panel with the more Islamic Liberation Front for the years 2004 to 2008. Now, uh, nagkaroon na po tayo ng bar. So it's a very uh, important feat oh, no? that we achieve relative peace in, in Mindanao. Please welcome.
The next discussant for the capital, Engineer Silvia Oparguya. Engineer, Ibing. Alam niyo po, yung signal po niya sa bukid noon ay on and off. So probably, if it's raining, there... Oh yes, ah, ma'am. Hi, thank you, ma'am. Please proceed. I should be able to share my screen, but I'm not allowed. Can you allow me to share my screen? It's already shared, ma'am. Uh, okay, I'll try. Good morning. I hope I can get this through, but I'm still disabled. The host disabled me from sharing. Oh, how is that? Edwin, hindi pa rin ako screen share. Okay, po. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, we will open the screen sharing. Uh, good morning, everyone. While the staff is preparing my presentation, they are allowing to screen share. Uh, my Okay, probably uh, meron po talagang experience ng uh, technical problem po sa area ni Engineer Ibing. Uh, pero we'll wait uh, para po dun sa pag-share niya dun sa screen. Okay, ma'am Ibing, engineer, okay na po mag-share ma'am. All right. Uh, while waiting for Engineer Ibing, uh, Ma'am Seni, uh, I'm sure our cooperators have their questions, uh, etc. Uh, let, let's uh, uh, wait until the last speaker will be uh, will be delivering this uh, topic. Yes, um, Ma'am. I'm here. Hello, Edwin. Oh, Can you hear okay. me now? Okay, na po, engineer. Okay, okay. Please proceed. Okay. Uh, I would like to thank uh, President Guarco and Balu for the presentation. Uh, if you look at the presentation of ICAAP and even the Global Alliance, yan talaga ang alliance. An alliance is not a creation of the government it is a creation of the cooperatives and i hope uh, this will guide us the philippines as we go through the process of putting up our national alliance let me repeat an alliance is created by the cooperatives it is not created by the government i'm looking at the presentation of balu and i know it is there but I hope we can have more discussion on the best practices on integrated networks, which is more on the business side. And we have examples of this in uh, NACOFOC, Japanese Agriculture, the Korean Federation of Agricultural Cooperatives, the Amul in India, which is one on uh, the dairy. And I I think we should also look at how the supervision is being delegated in these networks. And hopefully, we will see how the network level interventions ensure the sustainability. Second, my topic is really about capital. And if you want cooperative to be established, to grow and flourish, there should be capital. And uh, the aim is to secure reliable cooperative capital while guaranteeing member control. Kaya sabi kanina ni Father, dapat doon sa membership, ang max of your capital is 10%. Because if more than one, uh, if a person owns more than that, then you are not assuring that there is good membership control. And in the, in the 2030 blueprint, gusto sanang makita that there is recognition of the financial security of cooperative financial institutions. So, uh, we'd like to emphasize yung financial security. So that's cooperative capital. It is different from the typical capital because in the corporations, they really look at dividends. 
when they put in money, they look at the returns. That should not be what we will look at when we invest in the cooperative, especially our share capital. Here is just to show the, the interplay of the different pillars. But if you look at the way it was stated by uh, uh, Edi Balu, the growth of the COP movement is dependent on our ability to address the issues on the legal framework and capital pillars of the blueprint. So here, makikita natin na how these five, five elements work. So capital is really a form of participation of the members in the cooperative, but it is also an expression of the sustainability. But the capital has legal basis. There are legal frameworks which can ensure or even diminish the capital. And in the identity portion, it was already stated by father that part of your membership, uh, your participation, your putting in money is really part of the identity of the cooperative, that we are the ones capitalizing our co-op. Here, I'm just showing na ito yung typical way of how we finance, the, how we put up the capital. Diba? Nung nagsimulang co-ops, maliliit. We put up the share capital. Yung iba kung savings and credit, nagkaroon ng deposits. Then once you have that, you can borrow. And because the business, you will have a net surplus. And this will result to uh, a share of the person in the net surplus. But the net surplus has legal framework on how you distribute it. Na mention na kanina yung ating mga distribution of the net surplus. I think the issue right now is how do we now build up capital for new cooperative enterprises? Yung mga bagong bago, kasi there are scale of operations required of enterprises. But kung sisimula natin sa 100 pesos, 2,000 pesos, 3,000 pesos, when will the time come when these new enterprises will be viable? We should look at how we can help build these new enterprises. And for federations, how do we fund new federations? Like if I mention Agri Co-op, when it started, uh, we were there, but because we cannot be a member of another federation, we cannot infuse capital. We cannot infuse capital. So I think we need to look at how we can infuse capital to these new enterprises. Uh, ito mga words lang dyan sa ICA blueprint na magandang uh, i-reflect natin. These are very nice words and I'd like to stress here itong capital that meet human need rather than human greed. And I think this is something we should look at kasi slowly there can be an erosion in the identity of the cooperatives as we see more people pushing for, for very high dividends in the cooperatives. We should look at our capital to stabilize rather than destabilize our co-ops. And sabi nga, kailangan it is restrained, it is limited and controlled. And I think we have that, na dapat in a cooperative, the participation of a person or an entity will not be more than 10%. So ang tanong natin, how do we mobilize capital without losing our identity as cooperatives? Then here, I'd like to present, where are we right now in terms of capital? So uh, the sources of capital would be the member share and the net institutional capital. And we have the legal framework on this. The peso standard sets it at 35 to 45% and the net institutional capital at 10. Based on our data right now, the member share capital is at 25%. Medyo malayo pa tayo. But I think that's okay for me. But if you look at the net institutional capital, dito tayo may problema. We are still at 4% gross. I say gross kasi pag linisin mo dyan ang under provision, it will be less. So below you will see the the formula for the net institutional capital, which is the reserves, plus the allowance for probable loan loss, less the past due, less the loans in litigation, plus the problem assets. So talagang kung nag-underprovide ka, you have not provided for loan loss, and you have not provided for problematic assets, dapat bawasan pa yung reserves mo to come up with the net institutional capital. Ngayong COVID, ano ang nangyari sa atin? Kung titingnan mo, mababa na ang ating institutional capital. It will diminish our institutional capital. Di ba ang nangyari? Mababa ang income ng ating members or wala silang income, so wala kang collection. Pag wala kang collection, low interest income. Kung mababa ang low interest income mo, reduce ang yung revenues, reduce ang net surplus, or even deficit. 
Dahil hindi nakakolekta, dahil nahirapan magbayad, mag-increase ang delinquency. When you have a high delinquency, kailangan mo ng provisions. When you have more provisions, you reduce your net surplus or even deficit. That means ultimately you will reduce your reserves. We will re be reducing our net institutional capital, especially if we uh, realize deficits in this COVID time. I think ang gusto nating ibalik, those who can pay, pay voluntarily. It is the time now for us to be self-responsible and not just take, uh, parang dahil nag-moratorium, lahat na lang tayo, hindi na rin magbayad. I think we owe it to our co-ops to pay when you can pay and pay voluntarily. The co-op also needs to look at how to accompany members and bring back their enterprises. Otherwise, paano naman sila babalik sa kanilang kabuhayan? And we need regulatory relief in the provisioning of probable losses to ensure capital of the cooperative. Kasi kung walang regulatory relief, meron naman, bababa and it provide more. Sigurado yan, tatamaan ng ating net institutional capital. Here, I emphasize the, the blueprint emphasizes that we need to fund the long-term business uh, and we need form one form of capital for loss observing capital. Jan sa ating sources of capital, the shares and the institutional capital. Actually, ang net institutional capital mo is the one now observing. Its, its role is really to absorb losses. But then I think we are caught between two things. Should we give more to the members through patronage, refund, and interest on capital? Or should we provide more for the long-term sustainability of our cooperatives through the general reserve, through the CTF, through the CDF, and the optional fund? Right now, ang laki ng cost ng digitalization. Nung araw ang ating optional fund ay pang building, I think right now, it should be used for our investments in digitalization. So, here is my last slide. How do we bounce back better? I think we need to go back. What is really the cooperative capital? Cooperative capital does not, does not put heavy emphasis on dividends. We are not there as investors. The money is there as capital to help build a better world. And I hope we can all discuss that. Uh, and COVID, I don't know when it will but I think the effect to us can be in the next five years or more. Let us take this time as an opportunity to clean up. Let us, sigurado yan, bababa ang kita, but I think we need to look at how we bounce back better by providing more or increasing our provisioning. Uh, in the presentation of uh, Balu, he mentioned that some of the initiatives are really largely individual efforts. I think let us move this to a network and federation or union level. For us, that would mean liquidity fund, stabilization fund, network resiliency fund, including disaster funds. And we need to look at regulatory framework. How can we, how can we have a regulatory framework to allow us to capitalize new initiatives? Pag wala yan, mahirapan tayo na ang pera ng mga savings and credit can also flow to other initiatives. And lastly, let us always remember that the individual in the Philippines is a member of a COP, a member of a federation, a member of a union, a national alliance, an ICA, AP, or an ACQ, and a global ICA and that is the connection and that is not something we can regulate it is something which comes because we know that we are connected to the world thank you very much thank you very much uh, engineer being I was moved by your discussion uh, and I would like to emphasize uh, sinabi po niya, no? social capital is for human need and not for human greed. That's why co-op should build a better world. No? So yan ang importante pong mensahe ni Engineer sa paggamit po ng cooperative capital. Thank you very much, Engineer Ibing, for that very inspiring uh, discussion. And now, Ma'am Seni, to the next topic. Yeah, yeah the last but not the least, cooperatives in every jurisdiction sit within a legal framework this framework plays a critical role for the viability and existence of cooperatives. The blueprint seeks to ensure supportive legal frameworks for cooperative growth. So the next discussant, definitely not the least, 
is a current executive director of the Cooperative Development Authority. Let us all welcome Mr. Ray Levazo. Thank you very much, Ma'am Jenny. To our uh, guest of honors for today, uh, Dr. Ariel Guarco, the president of International Cooperative Alliance and uh, our uh, ICA Asia Pacific Regional Director, Mr. Baloyir, Congressman Kanama, uh, to, of course, Chairman uh, Gary and uh, the Gary Leonardo and uh, of the Philippine Cooperative Center and PCC CEO, uh, Sir Edwin Bustilios, all the cooperative leaders uh, top caliber cooperative leaders who are here with us today and who have spoken, who have uh, uh, provided the reactions and um, views. And to all of you, uh, the some 400, more or less 400 participants, probably to 500 to 600 participants for today. Good morning. Morning to each and everyone. It's very hard to, uh, uh, to be a reactor uh, reacting to so many uh, so many issues and concerns and reacting to top caliber uh, cooperative leaders. I was uh, intently listening to the President Guarco a while ago. I was intently listening to, to uh, Dr. Mr. Ayer and of course our leaders, Grabe. And uh, I want to react on all other points, but uh, uh, Sir Edwin, uh, assigned me, <laughs> Sir Edwin assigned me to a specific uh, uh, legal framework, to one specific uh, pillar, which is the legal framework. And I want to discuss this fastly or quickly. Number one, the Cooperative Development Authority uh, is very much aware that it is still within the mandate as stated by the Constitution, which is to promote the viability and growth of cooperatives as instruments of equity uh, social justice and economic development. That's our basic and fundamental mindset when it comes to regulating, to, to, the, to, to, the, to pursuing the legal framework and implementing the legal framework of the Cooperative Development Authority. And we are uh, continue, we, the, this mission of uh, ensuring the safe and sound uh, operation of cooperatives is inculcated in our hearts and minds being actors of cooperative development. And our vision, which is, uh, the vision which is uh, calibrated by RA11364 is still in our mind and uh, we continue to pursue it as an effective and efficient regulatory agency working towards the development of viable, sustainable, socially responsive and globally competitive cooperatives. With the 37 functions given to us, mandated to us by the law, RA11364, we are very much aware that the CDA is the registering agency for cooperatives in the Philippines, and we are the regulatory agency uh, for cooperatives in the Philippines together with call regulators. And number three, we are a developmental organization together with, uh, with uh, non national government agencies and other development actors, of course, including the cooperative movement. We are part of the development agenda for cooperatives and we are facilitating and the uh, old executive orders termed that as a lead agency for cooperative development. Now, within, within that mandate, within, within that uh, context, context, we are pursuing our legal framework. Number one, uh, the legal and regulatory framework being pursued and implemented by the Cooperative Development Authority today guards, seriously guards, the cooperative identity and the seventh cooperative, seven cooperative principles. That's our foundation. That's the foundation of our number one, inspection of cooperatives, our, uh, of our inspection tools, of our examination to cooperatives, and our regulatory reliefs. The foundation is, the basic fundamental foundation is cooperative identity. We seriously guard cooperative identity. Number one, number two, we pursue legal and regulation in terms of membership and public protection. We are guarding 
members' interest and we are guarding uh, cooperative interest against those uh, unscrupulous individuals who are who want to do to play a negative role in the cooperative movement. And we are guard, we are guarding also as a regulatory agency. We don't want the public to be victimized by individuals and groups presenting themselves as cooperatives, but they are not cooperative. So that's one anchor of our, of our uh, legal and uh, regulatory uh, framework that we are pursuing. Number three, we are bound by the East in doing business uh, principles, which uh, the Philippines is one of the, of the uh, actors and uh, uh, advo advocates. We want an enhanced regulatory framework, which is uh, leading more, leaning more on ease in doing business. That's why in our registration today, we, we launched e-coop RIS, the enhanced uh, cooperative RIS. And mind you, ladies and gentlemen, we, we also, nakalimutan ko before I, uh, before I, uh, before I uh, spoke kanina, nakalimutan ko po, the Cooperative Development Authority fully embraced the blueprint, uh, the strategic blueprint by the ICA. And as an expression of our support, not only that we have our own t-shirt, I would like to show you our t-shirt. And at the back is the Cooperative Development Authority. That's how we, uh, we pursue uh, International Cooperative Alliance principle. Number, number four, uh, in our, uh, in, uh, as a reaction, in our regulatory and legal framework, we are pursuing the whole of government approach. That's why we are talking with BIR, we are talking with other regulators, and we are partnering with other government agencies in pursuing reforms, in pursuing uh, regulation for cooperatives. We want our regulation to be uh, beneficial to cooperatives. And we are pursuing also, we believe in the Cooperative Development Authority that we are not only accountable with the sector, but the public, because we are created with public accountability. So we are moving also with the whole of society approach in our uh, framework and the whole of cooperative approach. In the participation, I would like to, to focus on the participation of cooperatives in the legal, uh, regulatory framework and the legal uh, uh, and other legal process, such as in the uh, in how we look at the policies being set forth by the board of board of directors, our memorandum circular, the DNA of Cooperative Development Authority, in coming up with its policies, in coming up with its guidelines, is to talk dialogue partner with cooperative sector. That's our life in the Cooperative Development Authority all throughout. Uh, uh, I was, uh, I am uh, how many years old in the Cooperative Development Authority? I'm 21 years old in the Cooperative Development Authority. And personally, I can say that the, one of the DNA, one of the characteristic of the Cooperative Development Authority is it, it, its uh, loyalty to democratic processes. So when we issue Memorandum Circular, uh, especially now that we are uh, pursuing the whole of cooperative approach, we are thinking of the democratic principle, which, is in, in, which was discussed by uh, uh, Sir Guarco a while ago, particularly in the people-centered uh, plan and in this discussion, the people-centered enterprise and people-centered uh, cooperatives. We are thinking of four elements of the cooperative movement. Number one are the large cooperatives. Number two, the medium cooperatives, number three, the small cooperatives, number four, the micro cooperatives. We want those sectors, we want every element of those sectors, out of those, uh, of those levels of cooperation to be partic participating in the whole process. That's why uh, if, you could, if you remember our approach in the National Alliance of Cooperatives, there is territorial and other and sectoral approach because we want also cooperatives from the front far, far flank areas to be represented and even the micro cooperatives to be represented in our processes. Cooperativism, as we know, 
is cooperativism by the people. Probably we have today with our membership of 11.5 million uh, contra our population in the Philippines. With our uh, composition of membership, probably it's high time. It's high time also to, to, for us to reflect of our composition. Are we a middle sector, a lower middle sector cooperative movement or we are also a cooperative movement representing even the far flung areas and even the lowest economic, uh, 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 economic being in the country. Uh, probably that's our, uh, that's our loyalties in the Cooperative Development Authority. We, we pursue the whole of government approach and the whole of society approach, and even the whole of cooperative approach. As we go forward, as we go forward with the legal, uh, our legal environment, we are aware of the 37 functions of the Cooperative Development Authority as enshrined in 11364, R11364. And we will continue as the pandemic goes on, uh, we will continue to be uh, relevant and we will continue to adapt in the changing times. And for, I, I've heard uh, the role of government a while ago. The role of government, uh, they said, is uh, uh, legislative and others developmental. Uh, and it was uh, expressed that uh, sometimes governments are intervening. Probably our, our thought for this is that the cooperative sector should remain as the cooperative sector and movement pursuing the ideals and aspirations of the cooperative movement. The government as a government uh, divided into legislative, or as today, today's uh, representation is divided into uh, legislative and executive branches of government. The CDA as executive part of government should pursue its mandate should pursue its mandate as Cooperative Development Authority and as enshrined by the Constitution and by RA11364. The legislative branch should also pursue their mandate as legislation, as in the works of legislation. And the key word is mutual respect. We should pursue our own mandates, pursuing our potentials as, as agency as an, um, and as a movement and let's have mutual respect. We should, uh, we should also take note of the history and, uh, and the reality of cooperative governance. Uh, in every country that I know that has a strong cooperative movement and a vibrant and robust cooperative movement, there is a mutual respect between the cooperative sector and its regulator in every, in every territoriality. The International Cooperative Alliance respects territoriality and respects the context of the territories, specifically for particular matter in the Philippines. Our call now, we want a strong cooperative movement, then let us mutually, mutually respect each other, mutually respect the process of governance and regulation. Maraming maraming salamat po. Magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Thank you. E.D. Ray. Yes, ma'am. Please proceed. Thank you, E.D. Ray. Uh, we just would like to mention siguro that CDA does embrace the ICA strategy blueprint, abides by the, at the same time, abides by the mandate of the Constitution, and it is guided by RA 11364. It guards the co-op identity and the seven co-op principles in, in whatever tasks it does. So thank you again, Edi Ray. Back to you, Edwin. Yes, Ma'am Zeni, thank you very much. Alam nyo po, uh, after the United Nations declared the global pandemic uh, and President Duterte signed uh, a law uh, stating uh, our, our country under the national state of health emergency, emergency CDA issued 17 memorandum circulars, uh, particularly uh, and relief measure, measures for cooperatives. So 
Marami palakpak po doon sa mga memorandum circulars na nakatulong po uh, in this time of pandemic, uh, IDRA. Well, of course, uh, for, for lack of material time, uh, we promise that we will have an open forum. But I think uh, all the inputs were already uh, discussed, uh, were already shared. But uh, since it's my birthday, <laughs> is it okay if I entertain one uh, direct uh, intervention uh, coming from the first one who raised his hand? His name is uh, Mr. Romulo. Sir Romulo, are you still around? Mr. Romulo Martin, are you still around? Oh, she, malamang nawala na po siya. Yes, yes, I am, I am, I am. I'm waiting for you. Yes, Mr. Professor Romulo, please proceed, sir. You're given okay. The okay. Uh, where are you going to put in place our graduates of cooperatives? Okay. I'm addressing the cooperative sector where are you going to place our pup cooperative graduates thank you for that concern sir so probably uh, thank you thank you yes in one uh, in one uh, stretch may we request the uh, comments coming from the uh, education and advocacy uh, unit or or pillars uh, who can answer from the discussion edwin hi edwin yes, uh, okay. father anton please yes yeah, no, sir gary muna sir gary go ahead okay father uh, sir gary please uh, two minutes sir oh uh, hi edwin i'd like to venture a quick response uh, pero before that, maraming salamat, Professor uh, Romulo Martin. No? I think uh, ang isang context na pwede nating tingnan ay yung sinabi mismo ni, ni Regional Director Balu uh, that we need to involve the youth uh, much more than we have involved them in the past. At ang isang uh, immediate involvement that I can think of is in specifically in the education and advocacy cluster. No? Uh, but then again, even for our individual cooperatives, we need to enjoin everyone to work towards uh, bringing in, pulling in uh, the youth, especially those uh, graduates that, for instance, I at present having difficulty uh, let's say, finding jobs, no? So uh, I'm not so sure if I responded to uh, the question and uh, baka pwedeng, pwedeng magdagdag si Father Anton. After okay. Father Anton. Um, thank you, Edwin. Thank, thank you, Sir Gary. Of course, no? Uh, napakahalaga sa cooperative uh, sector uh, yung practice of good governance, you know? At according to the vision of ICA 2030, now we need to uh, practice leadership succession and management succession in order to continue no, our vision and mission in making our country cooperative uh, oriented ano, and cooperative centered. Ano? Kaya mahalaga sa PCC, meron po tayong uh, resource center. No? Isa sa mga napakahalagang aspeto ng uh, PCC is a resource center. Maganda na meron tayong... Uh, job placement desk no na andiyan yung mga graduates ng uh, PUP and or young graduates who would like to work sa cooperative sector meron tayong employment desk no uh, job placement desk para lahat ng mga cooperative sector let it be known kung meron kailangan niyo po ng staff kailangan niyo ng mga ng crew ng uh, managers you can access the uh, employment desk of PCC that's all thank you Thank you, Father Anton. Uh, probably uh, Edi Ray would like also to share. Please, uh, Edi Ray. Hi, sir. Uh, first of all, happy, happy birthday, uh, Edwin. 
I'm glad to have here to have heard the uh, Professor Martin, sir. Uh, here with us, uh, your ED is a PUP graduate, proud PUP graduate, and uh, I've heard uh, your thoughts about uh, of, about the graduates of cooperative course in the PUP. Paano yung ginagawa nyo? Siguro nakatulong, makakatulong din ng Cooperative Development Authority. Una, uh, marami na po tayo dito pong uh, sa Cooperative Development Authority. May mga graduates po dito ng uh, Cooperative. One of my staff uh, comes from the top, uh, Cooperative Department, the CDA. Plus, before the pandemic po, we have a, we have a program called K-POP. Uh, kung hindi sana nagka-pandemic ay malawak yung uh, nagawa na nito. Uh, we are uh, uh, facilitating for job fairs for uh, cooperative uh, for uh, young people, the, the youth for job fairs all over the the, the country. Sana po ito. But uh, ang nagawa lang namin po ay uh, dito sa Rizal and other parts. Medyo konti lang. Hindi na kami nakabante during the pandemic. Uh, uh, karamihan po sa participants doon yung mga malalaking kooperatiba na kayang mag-hire ng, uh, ng mga bata para sa kanilang employment plus other uh, agencies of the government are there to announce their programs for the youth. So ganun po yung ginagawa ng inyong Cooperative Development Authority para po sa development ng kooperatiba. Uh, salamat. Thank you, Edi Ray. I uh, would like to announce na pinapasabi po ng ating President and CEO from the Metro South Cooperative Bank na nag po sila no, ng mga graduates from PUP. Uh, if all the co-ops, uh, HR head, uh, heads can send to the PUP our openings, pati OJT, padala po sa MSCB. Uh, binanggit din po ni uh, Sir Joe Manansala of the Quezon City Union of Cooperatives na sila rin po ay ano, ano, uh, nag-facilitate uh, po ng mga services din ng mga new PUP cooperative graduates kahit po nung OJT po nila. So, uh, Professor Martin, don't worry. Marami pong uh, mga cooperatives po ang mag ng mga PUP graduates. By the way, uh, uh, all the staff of PCC ay cooperative graduates din po. Edwin, ay, Edwin. PCC po ng PC, PUP. Yes. Edwin, uh, one, last, one last hear it po. Pwede ba? One lang, one, one minute hear it. Hello? Before I call, share the Okay. Yan. Hello, can I have one minute lang uh, para to to uh, no, to to end up my uh, no, my my query, please. Hello. Please proceed, Professor. Okay. Please proceed. Ganito po. Uh, kung magagawa ng paraan na magkaroon ng assembled civil service eligibility examination, good not only for our graduates but all those who are capable uh, of joining the civil service eligibility examination so that the graduates or the civil service eligible would become members or staff or employees of the local government units having their cooperative development offices. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, po, Professor Martin. Now we go to PCC Chair. No, very timely po yung mga youth na papasok po sa cooperatives talaga. Mr. Uh, Chair, Gary? Uh, Edwin, isang mabilis na ano lang na um, dagdag lang doon sa sinabi ko kanina. Ang isang malaking area na nakikita kong malaking involvement na ng youth na pwede nating ma-pursue ay doon sa area ng value chain. Lalong-lalo uh, na without lalo na sa 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 agri. Uh, kasi without without the meaning our farmers, no? Maganda sana kung para ma mas maiput in place natin itong value chain na uh, initiatives ng ating sektor ay ma, ma relieve ng konte ang mga farmers from doing uh, staff work no at dito baka pwede nating ma-improve yung ating mga kabataan no lalo na as we uh, eventually go digital in our value chain pursuits mas magandang ma-involve dito ang ating mga kabataan Yun lang ang mab mabilis kong dagdag. In other words, siguro, Chair Gary, bali, it, we now um, have a conscious intent to involve the youth. Yes, yes. Edwin, Edwin. Yes, thank you. Uh, so, sige po, last point po before we go to the uh, synthesis po. Uh, yes, sir. 
pray po natin na uh, magtagumpay po tayo sa TESDA CBA uh, fund din. Uh, dahil, uh, may, mga, may mga pinag-uusapan po kami ng TESDA. And I hope uh, pagka na mainstream po tayo sa proseso nila, uh, tayong mga kooperatiba, uh, makakatulong din sa mga graduates na, na ating co-op courses. So yun po, may, may programa po tayo na ini-enhance ngayon. Thank you, Idere. Actually, there's a continuing workshop with TESDA, CDA, and uh, uh, our fellow cooperators with regards to training regulation and competency standards. Uh, marami pong umaaten po dyan, no, ng mga uh, cooperators natin. Ah, so, kung, last point na lang po, nagtaas po yung ating uh, naglead kanina ng cooperative uh, pledge. So, may recognize uh, the CEO of the Nuevo Segovia Consortium Cooperatives. Please welcome, uh, Ma'am Divine Kemi. Thank you so much, Sir Edwin. Uh, I like the question of the professor. Our experience now, because you would like to engage the, the youth, uh, we have launched the uh, for, for this month, October, our uh, sales representative of the youth to the cooperative movement. So meron kaming mga pakulo ng mga activities na gagawin yung mga kabataan that the cooperatives has something to do with our, uh, how the cooperative be marketed in the community, how the cooperative uh, market the products of the farmers in the community. So this is not a formal uh, employment, but uh, uh, we are now trying the community that the youth will embrace how the cooperative works for the community. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Edwin. Thank you, Josa Divine. <laughs> no? uh, I think all of the answers talaga nakapokus para po dun sa mga youth natin no? na may involved sa cooperative. So, alam ko, naiintindihan po natin na yung time is very, very short at uh, napakarami ho talagang gusto pang magbigay ng kanilang uh, reactions and uh, 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 discussion as well dun sa mga topics. But uh, we're almost 12. Uh, my apology, our apology. Uh, baka ho pwede na yung pong mga, uh, according to Mr. Balo Ayer, the presentation is still a draft presentation and it's a continuing narrative where we are encouraged to comment. So uh, those who have uh, comments or suggestions on the proposals, uh, on the presentation of Mr. Balo Ayer, please feel free to share it uh, with uh, with PCC in particular, and and his email will be flashed uh, in, in in the chat room para po sa inyong information. So, without further ado, uh, I would like to call uh, Mam Zeni uh, for the very brief uh, synthesis. Uh, and then we will, uh, of course, call Ma'am Tetai for a very important closing remarks. Thank you, Ma'am Seni, please proceed. Yeah, thank you. Actually, I have several slides no, for the synthesis, but I know that you will no longer be interested to listen to me. So, um, going ko na lang one slide, and then probably we can share na lang the synthesis to them, Edwin. No? So, um, Discussion has been made about the five interlinked and overlapping themes of the Blueprint Strategy. And to pursue the 2020 vision, the Blueprint Strategy involves concentrating on the five critical interlinked themes, and you will see that on the screen, and establishing implementation strategies in relation to each of them. The overarching agenda for the ICA, its members, and the cooperative sector generally is laid out as follows. So you have there one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Para mabilis na lang. So all those have been elaborated, discussed uh, by the different, by of course, uh, first and foremost, Dr. Guarco, and then followed by Doc, um, Mr. Ayer, and then the five discussants or five reactors. And then we also saw the need of involving the youth. So all these na lang we will share. And each of these themes represents a priority area for the ICA its members and the wider cooperative sector, including the Philippines. And obviously, um, we call on the sector, obviously, Edwin, together with, of course, the members of the board, the PCC, we have much to do. 
Thank you. Thank you for that very brief uh, synthesis, Ma'am Seni. We will uh, uh, share the presentation, Ma'am, no? uh, to the participants here. And now, uh, the, the forum is about to end, but the celebration of the National Cooperative Month will continue, of course. I would like to introduce to you the uh, current CEO or the Chief Executive Officer of the Federation of People's Sustainable Development Cooperative, a secondary cooperative operating nationwide, which is focused on empowering the marginalized sector through the promotion of its own four piece. Hindi po ito yung four piece na uh, sa, sa DSWD, no? but four piece uh, ng FPSDC relating to advocacy, people, planet, prosperity, and peace. She has been with FPSDC since its establishment, wherein she was designated as an account officer from 1998 to 2003, general manager from 2003 to 2008, and CEO from that time up to present. Aside from this, she also holds positions in the board and committees of several other cooperatives. Alam niyo po, uh, she's from Angono Rizal, the art capital of the Philippines. She's also an art enthusiast doing arts and crafts, drawings and paintings on her spare time. Please welcome, Ma'am Christy Rowena C. Plantilla, or we finally called her Ma'am Tetay. Maraming salamat po, Sir Edwin. Um, it was indeed a very empowering and engaging forum. As we in the cooperative movement all over the world face many challenges today, Yung ICA Blueprint Strategy is intended to address these challenges and concerns in a proactive and po a positive way. The presenters a while ago uh, showed that if we work together on these five themes, the cooperative community can collectively drive forward its pursuit of a people-centered path for a second cooperative decade from 2020 to 2030. And while the ICA certainly has its own role to play and has every intention of rising to the challenges we face, the blueprint strategy will only be meaningful and effective if it will be taken up and endorsed by all of us who believe in the cooperative way of doing business. This is the key role that we have to play and we can play a role better if we, the cooperatives in the Philippines, will lead the way by cooperating amongst ourselves and deepening our engagements. So I would like to, to thank and congratulate the Philippine Cooperative Center for organizing this momentous event and of course, the ICA, especially uh, President Puarco and Sir Balu, for their continuous valuable um, support to the cooperatives in the Philippines. Uh, and I would also like to wish all cooperatives in the Philippines a fruitful cooperative month celebration. And God bless the Philippine cooperative movement and God bless the International Cooperative Alliance. Salamat po. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Ma'am Tetay, sa iyong napakagandang uh, closing remarks. Uh, before we end the program, we'd like to announce that there would be a series of technical working groups discussion uh, of the six uh, program clusters. No? On Monday, uh, key leaders uh, from the education and advocacy cluster will meet uh, at 9 a.m. Uh, Alauna po would be the financial cluster. On October 13, uh, key leaders also will be discussing uh, in the agricultural cluster. Uh, in the afternoon, it's the marketing cluster. On October 14, it's the utilities cluster at 9 a.m. And in the afternoon, it's the human service cluster. Uh, this uh, technical working groups discussion uh, aimed to uh, facilitate further our uh, development no, of the programs that was discussed earlier by uh, Chair Gary during his uh, presentation 
in our continuing uh, 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 development of uh, the different clusters uh, we've mentioned. Uh, ho also, uh, we'd like to announce that uh, on October 15, NATCO and PFCCO will uh, host the International Credit Union Day. And on October 20, we will have our day with the president uh, that is uh, uh, to be hosted by the office of Congressman Ben Kanama. Uh, on October 19, oh, I forgot, on October 19 will be the National uh, Transport Cooperative Day. Magkakaroon din po sila ng forum. Uh, on October 26 will be the market day, online market day, uh, that will be headed by the uh, NCDC. Uh, and lastly, uh, uh, before the last uh, activity this October, we are planning to hold a chairpersons and CEO dialogue on the 29th. Of course, uh, last but not the least, is the culmination activity in tribute to the cooperatives to be uh, uh, facilitated and organized by the Cooperative Development Authority, headed by our chairperson, uh, Orlan uh, Rabanera, and uh, our uh, executive director, administrator, Ray R. Elevaso. So, yan po yung mga series of activities. No, kung may kulang po, baka may announcement pa. Uh, the floor is open before we close it. Uh, mukhang nasabi naman po. Anyway, please visit the United Cooperative Movement Philippines. It's posted there. Please visit the website of CDA. Uh, marami rin po mga series of activities na nakalagay doon. Please visit the Co-op Apex FB account and all other uh, cooperative uh, FB accounts and websites. Makikita po ninyo na hitik na hitik po ang mga activity natin this October. Uh, Ma'am Seni? Yeah. Uh, there's a suggestion no, that we will also post in our FB page. Uh, Once again, thank you very much to everyone. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Paul. So uh, we'll be playing uh, uh, the video presentation of Cooperativa thanks to uh, our uh, staff, Miss uh, Miss G Lumboy, Miss Cat. Uh, sorry, Miss G Lamson, Miss Cat Lumboy, Miss Nicole Kalapati, Ma'am Seni, our co-host. Uh, the Office of Congressman Ben Kanama, particularly uh, Sir Darrell Romo, uh, Carlitos Duenas, Attorney Mariel, uh, who help us in this uh, forum as well, and all the participants, no, Monsteni, uh, na nag-participate kahit inabot po tayo ng tanghalian. We will have a hearty lunch, I am sure. So uh, for the closure, let's uh, view, listen. Uh, the, the video presentation of the Cooperativa. Happy Cooperative Month. Happy Cooperative Day. Uh, happy Cooperative Month. Kay 
สรับมาบูหายคุ้มไม่กรามาคุ้มไม่กรามาพอสูบบทีละกุมากาอานคุ้มไม่กาคาไปสุขีรับมาคำนี้ตั้งตั้งไปนำมาสาปกัดไกลละงาน่าดินอัมบาวัดอิสาสาอีสังดิกาอีนักดาดมายันสปาดลุทัสนมังสุลิรานิงทีโตมาดารมาอันตุนัยนาบายานิฮันทีโตยสิกรารุวลังยวนันสามาสามาสุขโอเปรติบายอิปักิตานาบินสมุโกนาบินลักัสขาปิดขมายนาทิงอรบีนังบูคาอีพัพพลาบัสพุทธานานามิญญาอัปเดตเวอร์ชั่นแต่ละหน้าอุ่นเชมีปุยงนัชชั่นัลคอเปอเรทีฟซัมมิตบีคอสออฟดีพันเด
Yeah, thank you, PD, uh, Secretary Martin and Sir. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Kongben. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Kongben. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.